Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This week we're going to be talking about War of the Realms and a recap of my trip to Florida competing in the Clicks Cup. This is episode 374. Howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make Hero Clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. The Fiend Bray Wyatt is still up for pre-order, so you might as well pre-order it <laughs> and see see what happens there. There's no reason not to. Uh, it's a fun $8 experiment you can play at uh, CoolStuffInc.com. Uh, joining me, like always... In the studio, both of us this time uh, is my uh, my co-host, the uh, Billion Clicks Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? I was just gonna say, you know, on top of Bray Wyatt, you could just jump off the cliff like me and Calder did, and pre-order all of Wave Two and see if the parachute ever appears on your back before you ever. <laughs> because Literally it's ever. been a wild two years. Is it? Has it been two years yet? It's been a full it's year. Not quite. Least. It's been uh, two years since they. Well, it hasn't been two years since they announced it. It's been almost two years since Wave One, and then because, it's been over a year since it was supposed to originally come. I don't out. know if we've ever said this, but uh, Extreme Rules was originally gonna be the release of Wave Two. Yeah, Extreme Rules got changed to the like to the original WWE stuff because we did not know when Wave Two was ever gonna come out. Never, we were just so, never getting it. Yeah. Take extreme rules and be like, hey, they waited until they thought like, oh, I don't know when Wave Two's coming out, and that's when Extreme Rules came out. Like, <laughs> so it's been a while for us for sure. Um, yeah, still not long enough where I'm willing to comment comment on every Wiz Kids Twitter post and ask where it's at. But I, yeah. I do kind of appreciate the people who are going the extra mile. And just being a complete burden to some stranger's you, life. So, <laughs> Simeon, you could never be as subtle and tactful uh, as, no. they, as they I would are. drop. I would drop a gif of Calder hitting me with a chair every uh, time for like a week straight. Yeah, um, but no, no, I, I'd never be able to be subtle about it. That's for sure. Uh, all right, uh, that was. Anyways, we like to start off with what made us uh, happy this past uh, week, week ish. Since we're recording, Simeon, what made you happy, my man? Uh, you know, since we've recorded last, um, quite a bit has made me happy. I've had I've had a pretty decent little half month uh, of span of time. But uh, here recently, the most recent thing was Maha Festival in Omaha, which is just Omaha without the O. Uh, very clever. It's a, a music festival, and boy howdy. I thought I had been to music venues before, but I'm definitely not a festival goer because the people that are there <clears throat> are just not like me. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it, but uh, very interesting crowd, very diverse group of people. I actually yeah. saw somebody that I used to camp with like 10 years ago. His name's Big Dan, and you can't miss him because he looks like Saruman from Lord of the Rings. Except he's six foot Ooh. eight, and he's just this like massive mm. dude. And so I see him walking through like the crowd with his like really long white hair just like flowing, and I was like, "Oh my gosh! Oh wow! That is Big Dan!" And I I actually like ran into him later by accident. He didn't remember me right away, but then he did after I explained where we knew each other from. And uh, he, like, he just goes, oh, oh L- little Bruce, how yeah. good to see <laughs> he you. He's like, oh, man, it's so awesome. Because his voice is super deep, so he's like, oh, man, it it's so <laughs> awesome seeing someone I knew here. That's crazy. Sorry I didn't recognize you, but all you smalls look the same. <laughs> 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 
I've never been lumped in with all you smalls. You small. But, but it's it's pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, that, that really made me happy. There was actually some really good music going on there. Um, I did not listen to the the silent DJ dance off. There was like three DJs where you had to put on a set of headphones and then dance to it silently. I didn't listen to that, so I don't know if that was any good. But the live music was pretty good. And that, that yeah, makes... that made me happy. All right, cool, man. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a dope time, dude. It, was there, was there like, a standout band you want to shout out? Maybe that was like, yeah, these guys, they know no, what it is. Um, the, so I didn't remember what, like, the set list was. And the band that I actually enjoyed the most is not the name that I remember. Um, oh, sure. There was one that was like, uh, like Axe Thurman and the Marauders. Um, it was like some some weird name and the Marauders. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is going to be like some sort of like punk grunge band. It's going to be cool. And then it was just normal country sounding band. And I was like, oh. that's not very Marauder-ish, though. No, not it? really. Like I w- I wouldn't classify country folk as marauders. Like when I when I hear the word marauder, I think either a pirate or like Mad Max. Yeah, but well, clearly you've never played Far Cry Five. So <laughs> very very cool name, um, just not my jam. Okay, hey, good keyword though. Well, it's not really a good keyword. It's actually kind of a strange keyword choice, but definitely uh, is a keyword. It is, yeah. it is indeed a hero keyword, yeah. All right, awesome, man. Uh, dude, this past week uh, was pretty solid. Obviously, the Clicks Cup is, like, the biggest thing. Um, so we'll talk about that later into news. But we did, uh, we did Patreon yesterday for our Bad Sam, which we do. Try to do it every Sunday before we record at 5 p.m. So if you're a Patreon member on our Discord, we try to do that. But uh, after we finished up Bad Sam and all that wrapped, so there was like, you know, I wasn't going to record the other night, so we were just hanging out. We talked for like five <laughs> five hours, and uh, yeah. yeah. just I checked was... in on the Discord randomly, and yeah, there were still like six people in the channel, and I was like, oh man, either something's wrong with Discord, or like they're still just having a good time. Yeah, like yeah, dude. We just we just we were just having a good time and just like chatting about everything. It was cool because it was uh, uh, Rick. Uh, it was Jackson's birthday, so that was pretty sweet. And I was like, oh man, I feel a little bad that like we made you like hang out with us for five hours for your birthday. But no, he's like, it was cool. So I don't know if we can just insert Happy Arabian Birthday here or not, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, that was really cool. And then Luke just posted in general, this is also sort of what made me happy this week, slash what doesn't make me happy at all, is uh, the What If Animated Marvel series is going to be out next week on the 11th, August 11th. And there's two versions of Captain America coming out in that. So there's Zombie Cap, and then there is going to be a Steve Rogers, No Serum, Hydra Stomper, and then Captain Carter. I don't know if I'm going to buy any of the Captain Carter action figures just yet. I don't know if she really counts as Captain America since she's got like the British flag Union Jack like stuff going on with her. So I'm like hoping I can skip her and just not have to buy it. Space. But uh, both Marvel Legends have showed off a deluxe Hydra Stomper uh, figure that I definitely have to buy and an awesome zombie Captain America figure I'm going to buy. Uh, sadly, Hot Toys which is marginally more expensive than any Marvel Legend figure also showed off a zombie Captain America and a deluxe Hydra Stomper and Captain Carter figures. Uh, Hot Toys are normally around like two fifty to like four hundred dollars, depending on like the size of the figure. So I'm a little like my wallet's shaking in its boots. Like, hey, we gotta buy everything Captain America. You know this, and so it's just like, no, please don't hurt me. Don't hurt me too bad, because like big big mechs like that for Hot Toys normally go to like four hundred five. So I'm just like, uh, here we go, here we go again. Got to get that Hydra Stopper though; it looks too cool. But yeah, no, it was pretty good, pretty good times all around. And yeah, and uh, WizKids has been posting things, that's for sure. They've had some wacky times over on Twitter. The best part about it is that we get to see uh, new pictures and new product. So let's go ahead and jump over to news really quick. So 
so you guys talked about the Cree and the scroll yes. lady, yes. right? So, so we need to talk about day, um, of the scroll. Uh, uh, probably just generic Cree soldier, but who yeah, knows? some dude. We need to talk about Loki. So we we got to see this. Uh, Loki, they say, retweet this image of Loki and we'll show you a never before clicks to character. The more people who do, the spicier the reveal. So I think it ended up getting over a hundred retweets, which by the way, it, I thought my caption was quite funny, but it was like, oh, retweet for hero clicks? Yeah, this is the illusion of choice. Like, there's no reason, no way no one isn't going to retweet that, whiz kids. <laughs> um, but, anyways, what it ended up being was Crusader, the daughter of, in a what if, it's a what if story, the daughter of. Uh, Rogue and Captain America, who is also somehow worthy of Thor's hammer. To be fair, both of those characters were worthy at one point in time, so I guess it makes sense. Um, yeah, like she looks cool. I didn't, I didn't realize that was a what if. Didn't realize Captain America had a daughter with Rogue um, in a what if story. It's like that's interesting. I knew he had like a what if story where he gets with Jessica Jones. They really, they really uh, deal out my man Cap to some uh, not choice females, if you ask me. Um, but uh, it is what it is. And it looks like a cool figure. I'm excited to see. I like Crusader. Cool name. You know, like Hammer Shield. Like, ballin. Ballin. Can't wait to see what she does. I'm going to assume if it's like, so that Loki was a picture of Loki from the War of the Realms set. Uh, I assume she's also from War of the Realms, but she yeah. may be from Empire. Just because of like Empire's whole wacky, oh, all sorts of wacky stuff. But War of the Realms of having a heavy uh what's it called asgardian theme it right. would make sense for someone with thor's hammer to potentially sadly probably be a chase maybe what if people with thor's hammer could be like yeah. a chase theme yeah. um and there were a lot of people that retweeted it so that's the only reason that it makes me think that it's like chase or super rare rarity at the very least you know just because uh hey would, we wanted it to be spicier based on and, sculpt uh oh yeah sculpt too like, so it's got an effect uh, if you haven't seen the image, it's got an effect similar to the Captain America chase Ghost Rider, who's like whipping his like chain in like a circle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's got an, a similar effect to that. Um, and then, it's, I mean, it's just a cool looking 3D rendering. But yeah, I don't know. As far as like whether it's a chase or just like a real cool super rare, hard to say because they have stepped up their game on like super rares. Um, but yeah, that being said, like. It's weird because, yeah, we haven't seen all of Empire. They have not released, like, a full set or, like, a... Um, similar to, like, how Rise and Fall had the poster with, like, the entire set. List, oh, yeah. The entire, yeah. like, figure sculpt rendering. We haven't seen that for Empire. So it is slightly up in the air whether these two, I'm assuming, Asgardian-related or Asgardian-adjacent characters are either in war of the realms or in empire it's cool either way i guess yeah so there was that they showed off on twitter they also showed off what was it here i'm just looking at that sculpt again man it's so cool like that's got to be like chase chase level sculpt uh you guys talked about jaro and i think that yes. this this was the only new thing they talked about so then we got to see uh war of the realms pictures so yeah we, we get to see the box art, box art. Man, yeah. look at that uh, chic, low quality slash. Uh, what do you call it? Like, I don't know. Pop art, like pop it's art like, Thor. Yeah, kind of like uh, yeah, kind of like. It's not really low quality. It's just like no, a flat, like art. Not style. necessarily minimalist, simplistic. but simplistic. Yeah, yeah, not like yeah, yeah very something simplistic. like that. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of <laughs> pop art, kind of like old style comic it's reminiscent but like uh how the wonder woman kind of looks i guess in the wonder woman booster That's you know true. where she's kind of like a shading oh like, you know what it flatter. is flatter yeah it's the exact opposite of the images from the dyson token pack <laughs> because those dude are like... the dyson token pack are like these 3d renders that look like They're... a bad mix of like terrible anime and like Alex Ross painting if like you stuff. Told me like, they these, look so bad. If you told me the Dyson token pack was like a new set list of like League of Legend characters or something yeah. like that, like some like Fortnite came out with like these like characters, I would not be surprised because yeah, it's it's a very like fully 3D rendered. Uh, look how many strands of hair I coded into this person's yeah. like visage Dude. kind of thing. Like, um, that like. Uh, 
Valkyrie and like Loki are just the the big offenders here. They look yeah. so bad. <laughs> Some big old anime eyes on them. Ugh, I don't know. Creepy. Daredevil with the glowing blind eyes. Like why is yeah. his eye- <laughs> He's blind. Why are his eyes glowing? Did he get some sort of like vision beyond vision? Is he I, Heimdall so I powered? Actually, is that it? I think he actually, I think he actually is Heimdall powered. Oh. I actually think that's his thing. <laughs> that makes more sense then, because I think HeroClix Taiwan made like a uh, post. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what I kind of saw too. <laughs> okay, that would actually, yeah, that'd be interesting for sure. Um, but speaking of the dice and token pack, the dice kind of look like a snowflake-ish kind of thing i don't really know it's it's like a i don't know it's three lines that form like a kind of triangular pattern and then each one has what i can only describe as like how i draw a pine tree on top um (laughs) it's just a lot of lines it's it's cool but it's it's a lot of lines uh the the actual images on the tokens as we said, are like super realistic 3D. Well, not super realistic, but super, oh yeah, I don't know about super realistic. Super like 3D Slow generated uh, kind of imagery. And it, there's one of the Daredevil that's in the set, and I'm pretty sure that these are f- like variants from the War of the Realms. Uh, yeah, they're variant covers. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so one's Loki doing some magic stuff, holding a staff. One is Malekith just grinning like a big old jerk. One is Valkyrie with like a war face and an, uh, let me see your war face. (laughs) Uh, one of course is Peter Parker with his very cool little horned helmet thing. And then Thor, because how could you do an adventure or not adventure as guardian set without Thor? Um, but yeah, I actually, I don't know. I actually kind of like this Dyson token pack. The color scheme's different than what they've been doing. Um, it's not particularly cool. I don't particularly like the color scheme, but it's it's at least different. It so doesn't. Like uh, it doesn't fit Thor to me. Like no. this is a very Joker Joker color scheme with like the yeah, purplish like, green. I guess maybe maybe like I don't. Maybe War of the Realms, they were like, I don't know. Is it like nuclear, yeah, I don't know. nuclear mud? Is that? What yeah, they, it's, it's is very that strange. Why they went to war? Because that's like the yeah. color scheme. Uh, a lot of neon green and brown. I think what's brown. a little interesting about this Dyson token pack is that none of the tokens are flipped over. And oh, then you true. see a pog on one side. That They've been doing true. that kind of recently. So big, uh, big speculation here. But does this set have no bystander generators? I mean, it'd probably be not. Like the but first in it a would while. be, yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty crazy. Because we have kind of come to like expect that a little bit, um, right? It yeah. is possible that it's just newish enough, like because this is still this is just a um, digital out. Yeah. mock-up. This isn't like yeah, yeah. This isn't like a physical yeah posting of it. So it's it is possible that later down the line we'll see a bystander at some point. Yeah. Um, it's also possible that they kind of go the way of rise and fall where the vast majority of figures that generate something generate a physical, like clickable figure. Oh, right. Yeah. So that's always, and I, I, I really like that. that. Yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, as much as I love bystanders, um, hella making like, what was it? Uh, souls, warrior souls. And then the warrior souls matching the physical warrior souls that were also in the set was cool. Um, but I, I actually, yeah, I much prefer making an actual dialed character if possible. Um, and then we see the fast forces, fast forces are just, we've got enchantress, Thor, Loki, we've got a black Panther an executioner or scourge and uh black widow kind of a weird hodgepodge because Enchantress, Thor, and Loki all make a ton of sense, and then maybe I just need to read War of Realms to understand. But Executioner is the only other one that makes sense. It's Black Panther, yeah. Black Widow, 
don't really make sense to me. I just don't know why. Like, um, I don't I mean I don't know what like the strike team was for like War of the Realms or whatever. So like maybe that's like that was like Thor's like you Black Widow, you Black Panther, aid thee on my verily mighty quest yeah. into space or some crap. Like yeah, who knows? Thor's like I must destroy the War of Realms, and uh, Scourge was like, and my axe. And Black Widow was like, and bow staff. <laughs> and then Enchantress was like, my magic. And Loki was like, oh, yeah, I was going to say that, too. That's why I was like, <laughs> he's pointing up, like, all sad. And then Black Panther Well, actually, just, like, I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank, Dude, thank you. Like, I get that Scourge is, is like testing the axe sharpness or like whatever for it but that's such an <laughs> undynamic and like lame oh, sculpt to have like yeah. both He's... feet together arms like tucked in elbows yeah. tucked in and just like him like sticking out a thumbs up to check his axe sharpness He's like yikes. slightly too vertical if they had put him in like He's... a crouched position yeah just standing straight up is so yeah. weird it is it's very like chess piece looking oh very much if so i was designing a chess piece and he was one of the figures that would be a great sculpt for that. Uh, super undynamic. And then uh, so. the last thing uh, with the whole War of the Realms, what we've seen, what we know, um, the what I'm still assuming is play at home kit at this point because I have no idea. Um, but for the at the very least, it's the LE and two maps. So we get to see the, the rainbow bridge-ish kind of map. Kind of looks more like a yellow brick road. I'm not really sure what's going on there. And then some yeah. sort of forest map, but we don't get any real details on them. Uh, but we do get to see Thor, and more importantly, uh, so this, of course, is the 100 Thor, because that's what all the LEs are numbered at right now. He's got Asgardian Deity and Warrior. More importantly, we get to see what the Recruiter trait does. And so... Recruiter reads power. Choose a character with the Asgardian keyword in your KO area that hasn't been chosen for or generated by a recruiter effect. If you do, generate a character with the Asgardian keyword from your sideline that has a lower point value than the chosen character. This game, the, char the generated character can't be replaced and your opponent scores them immediately instead of when they're KO'd. Mm. So this is both really interesting and almost immediately like not a competitive viable kind of thing like all at the same time. So in my opinion because this takes this takes like several setup kind of things. So number 1 I'm assuming recruiter this Thor's uh keyword is as guardian. I'm assuming Recruiter is going to be like, you know, Avengers. It's going to be named keyword kind of stuff. Everyone who has it will have a different one, hopefully. Um, that's like number one is you don't necessarily have to have a theme team, but you have to have like a game plan when you're picking out your sideline for keywords. Uh, so unlike Krakoan Revival, your sideline will have to be kind of, I don't know, cultured towards whatever you're doing. Number two is... You have to have somebody with that keyword that is KO'd, and that's never a great tactic to no. be like, yes, I will sacrifice this K like I will sacrifice this keyword character so that I can activate my recruiter team ability. The other thing is to get like a really good effect to pop off with recruiter, it has to be a fairly high pointed character that's KO'd. Like it's not like I can play this Thor with Surter on his retaliation line and Surter dies and then I can call in like another Surter or like another 25 point piece at best right. I can call in a 24 point piece because it has to be uh, less than the KO'd characters point value um, and then the third thing is your opponent immediately scores it so if you do like lose a like 75 point as guardian with this Thor and you bring in a 70 or 65 point You've just given your opponent half the like points they need to have 300. You know, like you're they're halfway to beating you essentially. Um, and all you've gained is a slightly weaker something that you didn't include on your main force. So, while I think it's a really cool trait and it's a really cool mechanic, I think it is specifically casual and that's fine. Um, 
It'll be interesting. It'll. This seems more like a rally to me than rally does, to be honest, because this actually this could actually like rally like yeah. the the troops kind of like in that kind of way, you know. I gotta say, this is definitely not uh, at all how we thought recruiter was gonna be was, no. was gonna work. No, yeah. I think the only thing that's even remotely related to what we said is that it is based on a keyword. So on a keyword, yeah. <laughs> pat on the back for us because yeah we like, totally I'll take it sure point. sure nothing in hero clicks is usually based on keywords but we definitely got that oh we totally oh yeah very creative like of us um Anyways. aside from that this thor has charge sidestep quake invulnerability toughness and close combat expert at different points in his dial we don't get to see his dial or his point value um if he's like 40 or 50 I think that he's worth picking up. Uh, I don't know who else is going to have Recruiter, but in a set that's likely full of Asgardians, I think there might be like one or two decent combos for this. And not like necessarily competitively, because again, you're pretty much doubling your opponent's points when you bring somebody in. They just instantly score whatever you decide to bring in. And that's, I don't know. That's like that's that just, upfront uh, cost no one ever wants to pay. Like, this is like the opposite of an ID card, where it's like, they might yeah. be able to score an ID character. <laughs> versus just like, you just, you instantly score. I'm like, ah, uh, dang. I don't know if I want to, like, that's when you have to look at, like, okay, how many figures have died? Because you could power action bring somebody in and then get over, like, in a 300 point game. You could, like, do 400 points and then be like, oh, uh, mercy rule or like whatever I instantly lose yeah. you know like like that'd yeah. be pretty awful uh, anyways dude I like that the store's powers are as if he's like Voltron amalgamation of like the Warriors 3 Sif and Balder because like all his powers like so his sidestep is Balder the Brave leads us to battle is Quake my friend the Vol, 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 Voluminous Volstag yeah. <laughs> you know and like fighting alongside Lady Sif Fondrel saves the day a blow worthy of the mighty Hogan. Like, first of all, you're the mighty guy. You're the mighty Thor, but okay. Yeah, Hogan both the mighty, but it's like and the mighty guy, yeah. Yeah, like, what? <laughs> so it's super weird that, like, all his power names are based on, like, his, like, friends. Uh, also, he leaves Loki out of it, which is hilarious. Um, but it's no, just like, is this, maybe... like, is this Voltron Thor or something? Like, I think I've I figured out what War of the Realms is. So the okay. Warriors 3 and Sif become like the captain planet cadets and Thor go. becomes captain planet and so yes you know sif is yes. like uh rage and volstag's like hunger and hogan's like uh mace and sandrill's <laughs> like i have a sword and i've been portrayed by two actors you were you were uh, so close Thor, you almost Thor had something going there like, simian <laughs> their their beam of uh hope or whatever and comes to save the day yeah that's exactly that's got to be sure. what the, the storyline is clearly i'm glad you figured it out detective simeon like yeah bang put good it job. together i've cracked the yeah case. you really have uh all right so that is uh it's pretty much war of the realms and then that's pretty much news uh tentative release date i guess is going to be december of 2021 uh man without having a set we're into august so we got four months till December, which means Empire's coming out in between whenever Rise and Fall comes out. So it is going to be just packed Marvel, Marvel, Marvel for the rest yeah. of the year. Because we had a huge drought from Wonder Woman in April to now. And then we're just going to get hit one, two, three Marvel, Marvel, Marvel sets. So this will yeah. be, uh, be interesting. Luckily. And hopefully WWE set comes out somewhere in there. Luckily, uh -huh. only one of uh -huh. the uh -huh. sets is X Men, uh, or Thankfully. solidly X Men. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, before we close news, I do want to say, in addition to that, uh, this is just the kind of like a PSA that I've noticed online. Um, hopefully, like our listeners are a, li a little bit better and more understanding than this, but. For some reason, people don't understand that WizKids does not control the tides and the the shipping. If you're unaware, there is a huge just shipping kerfluffle going on. It's been going on for slightly longer than like the last couple months, but it's kind of reaching like a, a breaking point now. And so it's 
I'm not going to go into detail about it, but there's a lot of factors and zero of them are something that WizKid controls, WizKids controls. So the fact that Rise and Fall isn't out, first of all, shame on you for wanting that set. Uh, but second of all, the fact that like Rise and Fall isn't out and WizKids is previewing stuff, uh, that's because WizKids schedule... Like, they expected Rise and Fall to be out. It's not their fault that, like, it can't get shipped. Like, docks are full. Shipping containers are full. There's nothing to be, like, moved around. Like, you know, we're at, like, a a shortage of people working, that kind of thing. Uh, WizKids can't control that. But what they can do is try and keep people excited for the new stuff that they haven't seen. And so whether or not you think that's, like, their best course of action for WizKids... I don't know. I honestly, I don't have an opinion on it one way or the other. I always like seeing new stuff regardless of when it's going to get here. Um, I'm not super impatient. So, like, clearly, I haven't canceled my pre-order for WWE Wave 2, and I've been holding it since before Fantastic Four Future Foundation came out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've I've been sitting on it for a while, to say the least. Um but yeah, just keep in mind that uh, WizKids does not control shipping. Uh, now, if they if they produced HeroClix in America, like that would be a different story, uh, a much more expensive story. But it would be a different story for sure. Um, but yeah, they they have to ship from other places, and those places are all booked up for quite a while. So when you tell WizKids, like shame on you. For for previewing these things when you haven't released terrible X Men set, it doesn't make sense because WizKids wants to make money and they just can't because it's just not here. But yeah, that's that's my yeah. PSA. Uh, look into the shipping crisis because it's uh, more than just hero clicks for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. One quick add on while I'm editing, uh, the day after we recorded, Mister Kenny Pena. Um, who no longer appears to be a Dolphin fan, which is sad, sad for the Dolphin world. He has said that X-Men Rise and Fall will be releasing pre-release possibly August 18th and normal release August 25th, of course. He clarifies with uh, dates subject to change, but it sounds like it'll be here sooner than a lot of people have been led to believe. So Rise and Fall is on its way out, it seems. We'll just have to wait another three-ish weeks, so that's not too bad. Uh, All right, guys, I guess this is going to be the part of the show where I talk for an hour and a half about uh, the Clicks Cup. So go ahead, start your timers, and let's let's have some fun. No. Um, The Clicks Cup was awesome. It was a great time. It was obviously hosted by David Newmark, uh, Clicks gentleman and all-around Florida man. So it was was good seeing it. So it started off. You guys got to see a little bit, I guess, of the trip. I realized that my travel vlog was mostly just me talking about how I did in between tournaments and not a lot of like establishing shots or like pictures of the venue, like when it's full and like whatever else. It was pretty random in there. But uh, uh, once again, another solid showing by your host here. So it started off with the Thursday night casual night. There's a little bit of a meet and greet uh, social hour. You know, you know, good old David, he uh, had some free chips and some free drinks, some little, little uh, fruit waters and whatever down there, I guess. Um, so, like, that was cool. Casual night, I played a, uh, you guys saw it, but it was a pretty uncreative team. It was Triple Medusa, Double Steve Rogers, Voyager, Triple H, Duke Thomas, and then uh, Odin, a little, a little stolen Odin there from uh, from Simeon. Took his idea a little bit. <laughs> um, hey, to be fair, you played that before we recorded that uh, episode, so I had... No idea. Also true. Yeah. Also true. Uh, and then, yeah, so, like, the team did all right. Uh, it never, like, alphaed the way I wanted it to ever, which is, like, such a shame. I, I That's, like, the frustrating thing where it's like, yeah, I'm a 14 for 6, smack a smack a round, whatever, but not. Nah, the team never alphaed the way it should have. People, like, chose, like, I lost the map every time, and people chose, but I don't think it lost it every time, but, like, people chose, like, they had... I mean, they had good positioning for themselves, bad positioning for me. 
or like you know even with my 14 attack they had like a 21 defense or something you know it was very it was very inconvenient trying to like hit people sometimes which like sucked so like the first game we were able to win wasn't able to like wipe the team it was a 500 point game by the way which is just nutty um and then next game i played against a listener playing an all like latveria theme team and so i i made the bad uh choice of trying to be like yeah I'm going to kill God Emperor Doom in one turn, which I could do, technically. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. Like, but we ended up missing every single attack, and I'm like, oh, well, oh, I'm, very, I'm dead. Yeah. I'm 100% dead. Yeah, like, there's, I got nothing then. Like, this team is, this team is dead. You know, so, like, that, that game was a little rough. Um, I, and I don't remember what or who I played in the last game, but then I won that one. So I was like, okay, you know, two and one, casual night, having fun. That was neat. Um, Hotel was a pretty nice hotel. It was the Hyatt Regency. Uh, there was a TV in the freaking bathroom. So if you wanted to watch Supernatural or the news while you brushed your teeth, you could. Awesome. It was built into the mirror. Yeah, like Man, it was so unnecessary. 200 but... meter sprints going on, but I really have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> ah, thank goodness I can finish watching it in here. <laughs> I would have been so upset if yeah. I didn't get to see who won. Yeah, uh, like... Yep. Hey, man, sprint. it was there. Yeah. It was there. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the first day. Uh, second day was just getting organized for 300 Modern. I played a Latveria theme team. I liked Chad Birdsall's idea when he was on the show, um, and I was like, all right, cool, I'm going to play that, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit. So I just pulled Sky Tyrant the week before, so I'm like, I'm going to put Sky Tyrant on the team, and then I'm going to uh, slap on Nathaniel Richards, we're going to get rid of one of the Phoenixes. We're going to get rid of, I think he had two high evolutionaries. I only had one. And I put on, obviously, Power Gem for Sky Tyrant. But it was basically, it was like Double Flash. It was High Evolutionary, Nathaniel Richards, Dark Phoenix, the map bonus, obviously Doom the Annihilating Conqueror to make it a theme team. And then I would normally swap him out to All Caps Doom. And some other figures were also there. I don't know, Molecule Man and like something else. Other way, it was like a plus eight. Latveria theme team it did pretty well so like you guys saw in the video and if you didn't watch the video i'll just recap it for you really quick first game i lost played against double black widow was still getting a feel for the team we only i only practiced it twice against another very similar team at like 4 a or like at 12 a.m the night before we left for the clicks cup so it wasn't the greatest practice it was more just like figuring out like how i want my setup to be and everything um so yeah so we did that, and uh, and then, yeah, first game we lost. Played against Double Black Widow and, uh, what's it called? Black Leopard, hate that guy. We killed one Black Widow, that was it. And then I was like, all right, game's hey, over. That's a rough um, team, because those Black Widows heal off their stop clicks, right? Yeah, yeah, they do, yeah. And Dang, it was just terrible. So and so, and I couldn't do, like, the Black Widow or the Dark Phoenix thing, which what you're supposed to do with Dark Phoenix is, like, just throw her out there. And then put her next to a Latverian peasant because it's not a May. You have to generate them. Uh, anyways, you put her next to a Latverian peasant, and when they start the game, that's like their starting area, which means they have uh, what's it called? First turn immunity. So you can't double target her and the Latverian peasant, and then she can mastermind to it and be fine. So like that's like the whole like play with like that. But you can't do that because Black Widow can just be like pen poison. Here you go. So you had to I had to play more conservatively with everything. Um, and be a little more careful with what I was doing. And it sucks. Uh, so yeah, like just lost that game. A little bit of a bummer. A little bit of a bummer. Uh, next game, I was able to win, I want to say. I honestly don't remember what I played against. But I did beat it. It wasn't like a super handy defeat. Because I think... No, it was. Yeah, I got 300 points. So yeah, I got a 100 point loss, 300 point win. The next game was a 50-point loss, and I only killed this dude's Scarab. Lost the map, put me on Ancient Hold, which is really inconvenient for, like, telekinesis sight lines with, like, the Flash and Nathaniel Richards and trying to get my team moved up. And then he also had a Sky Tyrant, so it was, like, this, ah, uh, barrier and blah, 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 blah. Like, it was just really tough to uh, figure things out. I made a couple of all right plays, but overall, you know, I obviously lost 300 to 50, so not my best game. And then that was break. And I was like, man, I've got two losses. I have one win. It's 74 people. They're going to cut to top 16 out of 74 people, which means I have to not only win the next two games, but I have to sweep them. And then 
it's a big maybe I'll be led into top 16. Like, humongous maybe. So we eat lunch. It was a pretty tense lunch. I had a, I had a Walgreens dinner, went over there, and just because the uh, there's a marketplace at the hotel, crazy expensive. Bag of chips, like a mini bag of chips, $4, Holy you know? Yeah. Something dumb. Like a candy bar, which is like 89 cents or whatever at a gas station was $3. Like a convenience store yeah. in like the lobby kind of thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It, it was also crazy. like a mixed like Starbucks. So like it was a Starbucks that had food. So like some of the sandwiches were like okay. It's weird, you know? yeah. Starbucks at that point is probably the cheaper option. Yeah. Very strange, right? What a what a bizarre world we live in. Um <laughs> So yeah, I instead like that place was just packed and like super full. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna do like the order mile walk to Walgreens and then get back. And that was probably not the best choice, but I was hungry. Hungry. So uh, end up going against Charles Garst this next game, uh, a member of the Uncanny Clicksman. And that's that's just like tough. When you know you gotta play against like anyone who's on like a hero clicks team, you just know it's gonna be a tough like fight. You know, you play against someone from Phoenix Nest or the Clicksman or Earthbound and Down or like the Secret Invasion people or like whatever, you know it's just gonna be like a difficult fight because those are like players that like take it real seriously or like whatever you know so it can be it can be tough uh it was a pretty tough game he played double jason uh dj doom and spider pharaoh and we i was able to sweep it but it was a close game it was a really close game uh it came down to i think and he had proteus on the team as well uh it came down to just all caps doom tracking down Jason and eventually doing the power, make three attacks, bap, 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 to kill Jason. That was, like, the toughest thing. It was, like, we whittled each other's teams down completely to just a 75-point figure left, and I was like, I gotta... Like, obviously, all caps Doom is gonna kill Jason. Like, more so than Jason could ever kill all caps Doom, but Jason can also mind control, move him away, like, whatever, you know? So we had to get that flow of who has tokens, also basing and getting adjacent and not running away, like, all that stuff. We had to get that flow figured out to then be able to even make attacks. Otherwise, it would have been a tie, you know? And it's like, yikes. Not what we want to have happen when we need to try to sweep teams to get in the top 16. But I was able to kill Jason, so I've got two wins, i got two losses, um... We are at uh, 650 points. Sorry, 750 points at this point in time. And I'm like, I got to wipe the next person. Uh, next person I play against is Micah Love, another uncanny Clicksman person. And I'm like, dang, Micah is super fun to play against, but I have never beat Micah in a tournament ever. Um, so I was like, this, this is going to be tough. Micah was playing a team similar to his teammates, but it was Triple Jason with Spider Pharaoh and then probably the Proteus retail or something like that. But I was like, dang, triple Jason. That is a lot of rookies, a lot of pogs that he's making. So it was tough. Uh, but yeah, it was once again, like me and Micah always have crazy fun games. Like it's just, it's always a super fun time. Uh, love playing games against him. But yeah, this is like my first ever win against Micah. I was able to pull it out and beat him. And that let me have 1,050 points left. Going into, uh, yeah, three wins and potentially making top 16. And lo and behold, I got uh, the 16th spot. They announced it. It was me versus uh, Joe. Uh, Joe, member of Phoenix Nest, good guy, uh, really funny dude. And he was playing a crazy, just all sorts of different Alpha Strike stuff. He had, uh, what's it called? Dr. Oz. Mr. Oz, excuse me. Gosh, uh, <laughs> he did not have Dr. Oz. He did not have Dr. Oz on his team. He was not telling me about like skincare and like how peroxide is bad or like whatever. Um, no, uh, he had Mr. Oz. He All had, you need you know, is some the... apple cider vinegar and bam, yeah. six is gone. <laughs> Yeah, dude, yikes. Uh, and then he had, you know, the Charge Flash, the TK Flash. He had Sky Tyrants. Um, you know, big respect for me. He had uh, Guy Gardner, Red Lantern Guy Gardner, which was cool. Nice. Yeah. But he also had uh, Jason and uh, Molecule Man. It was just a ton of good offense stuff with enough barrier to uh, make it interesting. So I probably made a poor map choice. I didn't go to the Latverian Village on this map because I just didn't feel confident uh, slapping Dark Phoenix out there, not having another one to back her up. And I just didn't like the idea of leaving her out 
in the open to get shot by a rookie pog or whatever. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to go to WWE Arena indoor. I'll lose my map bonus. I won't get any peasants. I don't think it's a big deal. And the game kind of devolved into like, oh, he killed one of my pieces. I killed one of his pieces. Kills one of my pieces. I kill one of his pieces. And then I, I just ended up being on the wrong flow of killing pieces because uh, it came down to just Sky Tyrant against Guy Gardner. And uh, I wasn't able to make the second attack against Guy Gardner because he rolls on the combat reflexes. And that left Guy on poison, which meant he could just, you know, kill Sky Tyrant, resurrect, poison, resurrect. And then he could punch him, and the chainsaw had two shots to punch him. And then that was all she wrote for uh, for uh, whatever what's called Sky Tyrant. So it was okay. I was super proud of it, though. Like, out of 74 people, I made top 16 in a, like, 300 modern hero clicks, like, competitive events. Like, that That to me is, is huge. I'm pretty proud of being able to pull that off, especially when, you know, everything was on the line. I had to make two wins, and I was able to make those two wins. So... Yeah, I'm not like you, a competitive player or whatever because it wasn't roll twenty. So there's also that. also that. Yeah, I wasn't able to just cheat like I always do on roll twenty. So no, 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 not necessarily yeah. you. Just, uh, just oh, okay. you know, people who make top sixteen on roll twenty right. base tournaments. Okay. Uh, no, okay. that is hey, that is true. Lucas Van Holland wasn't able to make top sixteen. So that's true. What does yeah, that yeah. say? Surprise! Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting hmm. for sure. Hmm. Um, Interesting. But yeah, that was three hundred modern man. Like wild times always. Oh, what was that listener who won 300 Modern? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. It wasn't me, sadly, so we don't actually have to talk about it, no. Uh, 300 <laughs> Modern uh, was won by Tyler Spees with his animal build. I, I talked to Tyler a little bit earlier oh, that day. Brad Broyles build? Is that what you said? Uh, it was pretty much. Uh, but Brad was playing X-Men, but he also had double maggot. I think Tyler Brad's three. Build... It's one more maggot makes the difference. Clearly. Uh, you know, chip and everything like that. So it wasn't an X-Men theme. It was whatever. But I was like, man, dude, animal theme, no retail. I told him, like, does it feel weird uh, carrying around something so light? Like, there's no two-by-twos on it at all. And he's like, actually, yeah, it is kind of weird. <laughs> because, you know, Tyler's the big, you know, he's the whale guy. So, like, whale he always carries around. Yeah, like... Yeah, like tons of two by twos. And like this team has like none of them on it. I'm like, dude, you have no retail on your team. That's just so strange. I never thought I'd see the day. But he won. So, you know, big ups, big congrats to Tyler Spees, dude. Always a cool guy. Always a pleasure to hang out, talk to them a little bit. Um, so, yeah, yeah, he won 300 Modern. Uh, I want to be do big shout outs to a uh, Patreon member, Kevin Nelson, for rocking double null double. Mr. Oz <laughs> yeah. to top 16. Sadly, getting beat out top 16, but dude went four and one. In uh in Swiss Dang. with double null, so like shape change rolls were hot, and like here's like my, my crazy thing about like double null is I don't know is he a twelve attack eleven attack something? It depends on what what, is he uh, what like point he's value double null is at one twenty. So at one twenty five at one twenty five null null's an eleven attack no flurry. But he's got Giant Reach 2, and you can't use Shape Changer Super Senses with the sword, and you can't reduce below 1. He's got Outwit. But uh, besides Mr. Oz, because I don't know if it's a theme team. I guess Oz might have Cosmic. Let me double check. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mr. Oz. No. He does. Okay, so it is a theme team. So he's got three theme probs, plus an Oz prob, with an 11 attack. That's just crazy that he was able to like just slap people around, you know? Because in any one given turn, he has three probs, and the next turn, he has two probs, and then every turn after that, he just has one prob with Oz, right? So, like, it's just, I mean, it's I like, it's kind of like point it depends on which his stuff. point value is, but Null's other point value is 250, so quite yeah, literally, so you can it could play. not be a double Null team with either, at, yeah. yeah, anything other yeah. than 125. Uh, so he, he had 10 points left over, was that just like a gem, or... What was he I honestly don't know. I honestly have no idea what he was playing. I don't. I think Kevin might have been playing ten down because I've only ever seen his opponent score forty points. Like Dang. he very well might have just been playing ten down because like the Knolls already have like both objects, right? So yeah, yeah, you're not equipping like, them with anything else. Likely. Yeah, that doesn't make too much sense. But he can either do like a WWE ring, which is very situational. If your opponent jumps in there and lets you then jump in there, you know, like. Or you're just ten points down, right? You know. Uh, so Noel 
essentially has uh, like a form of phasing with his uh, free place and within hindering terrain within four squares. So on the right map, he can just go through walls situationally. Um, yeah. I know like my the most experience I have playing Null is when we ha- did the Make It Meta tournament. And oh, yeah. I played my Null with uh, Molecule Man, which was amazing because I could shut down my opponent's like... Your other uh, Null, yeah. Yeah, the, I could shut down the other yeah. Null and like where they could move to just by turning their smoke cloud into barrier um, with Molecule Man. But yeah, that is double it is, null it is with pretty, a is wild. four to six rollout and then a five six willpower roll, uh, five six impervious roll top dial, and then negating those kind of things with the Necro Sword. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it's a very solid team, but like Kind of like what Kevin said uh, a little bit is like if he just doesn't make shape change, he doesn't make shape change, and Sky Tyrant goes yum, you know, which sucks. <laughs> uh, that's like the crappy thing about like modern right now. Excuse me, but like Sky Tyrant is like, and I know I played one with the power gem, whatever. But Sky Tyrant is such a buzz kill where it's like, oh, I charge up, I'm a uh, thirteen for six, elite, elite, you know, like whatever, or like a thirteen for five or twelve for five. Like it's just yeah. It sucks playing against Sky Tyrant, man. It just it just does. Um, anyways, that was uh, that was Stranger Modern. Always a good time. I honestly, what did we do after Three Hundred Modern? I do silver. Not even remember. Uh, no teams. Sorry, excuse me. Teams was the oh, next day. Uh, on my team was Brandon and David. Both super cool guys. Uh, Brandon, I think, is from the Florida area. I know David for sure was from the Florida area. Um, and we were doing Water Woman Team Sealed. I like Water Woman as a sealed set. It's pretty. It's really fun. Um, yes, Superman and Zeus exist. Um, yeah, it's it's rough. And I, technically, yes, Sky Tyrant is in the set, but like the chase is like, come on. Uh, anyways, we had pretty good pulls. My team ended up being full point Zeus with Jason and then a... Uh, Allied Soldier for the enhancements, and then Star Sapphire for TK and Barrier. So only two main attackers uh, with a TK that can be used defensively, and then of course I got my little Allied guy bumping my damage. Um, Jason has prob, uh, Zeus has prob, Zeus has two stop clicks. He's a 19 impervious. He's got Mystics. He's a 12 attack, five damage, triple target, seven range, top dial. He's a beast. Um, so I really just really dug my team. My our B player, which is Brandon, we pulled a King Shazam, which is very lucky for us. Um, yeah, super solid and sealed. So we had Brandon just play full Shazam with Apollo. Uh, Apollo is awesome. Uh, honestly, dude, Apollo is crazy good and sealed. So Apollo, the only bad thing is that he's got sidestep, right? So. Apollo is 100 points. He is 9 speed sidestep, 11 attack, pen blast, 18 defense, invulnerability, 4 damage with prob, and he's got power cosmic. Like, Apollo is a baller. He's also 8 clicks deep, and half of those 8 clicks he has regen to get him back up to it. Uh, Bottom dial, he's just, yeah, 4 clicks of regen, 4 clicks of outwit. His last 2 clicks, he has stealth and pen blast and 11 attack. He only has two clicks with a 10 attack value on his whole dial. He only has four clicks out of his eight click one dial with a three damage. Uh, and he has blades every time he has three damage. So if you want to, it can be more. Like, Apollo's a beast. So he had Apollo, Teen Lantern, and then King Shazam at full with the Angler. We were giving the Angler to King Shazam for that extra extra boost just to totally mess fools up. You know, and maybe it would have been better to give it to Apollo. I don't know. Maybe maybe he changed up how he played his games. Oh, another big thing about Apollo. Uh, targeting, elevated and hindering. Oh, yeah. It's just gnarly. It's crazy gnarly. Like, Zeus just has improved targeting, hindering, which is, like, okay. But, like, being able to shoot through elevated is insane with Apollo. Like, that's just awesome. Um, anyways. And then our last dude, uh, David, we kind of just gave him, like, the whatever team. We gave him full point Superman with an Amazon to make it an Amazon theme team. And then we put Batman on the side. So that way the he had plus one attack against Justice League as an ally. So I used to have the sheet, but we all lost our first round. Uh, I played against Caleb Reddick, 
Um, I think Maiko is also on that team, and then there's another Klixman. Basically, a Klixman team. Uh, my dice abandoned me really hard in in that first game, and I also didn't, didn't think I played it to like the best of my ability. He had Strife with Superman, and I every single time I went to shoot Strife, it just I could never connect, and I was taking way too much Mystics damage than I should have been taking, which really sucked. Uh, but we lost that game. Next game, uh, me and Brandon were able to clutch out a victory. The game after that, I clutched out a victory, and then David clutched out a victory. And then the very final game of Swiss, we uh, went against went against Kevin. Uh, I believe, I don't remember who was on their team, but also Isaac Denke was there. So I played against Isaac. Isaac had a just a team of a ton of attackers, right? He had... Steve Trevor, he had Antiope, he had the common Wonder Woman, he had the Chase Star Sapphire Wonder Woman, and he had, uh, what's her face? Wonder Girl. Like, he just had a bunch of attackers. You know, I have, I have two attackers on my team. He has, like, four. You know, plus he can, plus he pulled two Amazons that Wonder Woman can generate, and an allied soldier that Steve can generate. So I was just, it was, our game, it took so long. I wish I would have filmed this game. Zeus, it ended up being like just Zeus at the end of it, and he was starting to lose people that could deal Zeus damage. Like I finally, I finally killed Star Sapphire Wonder Woman after a long time. Finally killed, I killed Donna Troy like right, not Donna Troy, excuse me, Wonder Girl right away. Her name's like Cassie or something. Uh, killed her like almost right away, which is good with Jason. And then it came down to there weren't a lot of people left that could even do three damage to like take Zeus out. So he was relying on like Steve to bring in his allied soldier and whatever. Um, and then like with like three turns left, basically, like I didn't know there were three turns left, but like before the last three turns, Zeus goes to shoot somebody and crit misses and puts himself on his final stop click. And I am sweating bullets the entire time. <laughs> I am just like, oh, please, no. No, Zeus can't go out like this. Not the mighty Zeus. Please, please, no. And somehow, dude, Isaac must have missed a, a record number of attacks that game. Like, it was it was pretty bad, honestly. But yeah, Zeus was sitting at his last click, which he just has like an 18 impervious, you know? And no prob either, and just Isaac's dice abandoned him. And I, I just got... It was crazy lucky that game. It was like it was a close game. It was a fun game. There were just some wild dice rolls on both sides. Like it was, it was fun. It was fun. I think the few times I've beaten Isaac come down to similar things. Um, when I played the Tendigo Tri Tri Sentinel, uh, he was playing uh, Dweller in the Darkness. I don't know. It does not matter. Uh, but called in an Iceman, boosted his like attack and damage to super high and at the time Iceman could pop off and keep charging if he KO'd somebody and so he was just like burning through my Wendigos because they're all giants and uh, colossals so as long yeah. as they're a giant or colossal Iceman can keep attacking and he like kills two Wendigos gets to the third and I think the third he like misses probs it needs like a three or a four or something like very low and just like could not hit like kept trying and just could not hit and i was just like well i guess <laughs> i guess i i made a good team here huh because clearly <laughs> you you eventually miss if you attack enough uh successfully attack enough and you you aren't miss. uh you aren't wrong <laughs> That's how it feels sometimes. You make enough attacks, you're gonna miss sometimes some. Sometimes I'm them. like, man, like, I really outplayed yeah. you by just having more figures on my team. Guys. Yeah, it's pretty. Funny. Look at all these figures. Think about all those attacks you'll have to make. You're gonna miss some you're of gonna, them, boy. It's like, uh, <laughs> like <laughs> in some sort of terrible like boxing thing, like like Rocky. He's like, well, I might not be the best boxer, but I'll sure wear them out if they hit me a hundred times. That's <laughs> like, right. that's not how you box, though, Rocky. What are you doing? Uh, not saying I'm the I'm the Rocky of hero clicks, but uh, my teams sure are. No, uh, a little Rocky is that what you're saying? <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were somehow able to make it to the top six or top eight cut of teams. I was like, oh yeah, let's go, boys. So I was like super prepared for us to win teams. Uh, we went up against Secret Invasion. I played against Matthew Ventura. 
Uh, he had Yellow Lantern, Hal Jordan, and really? uh, yeah, <laughs> right. I feel like if you pull it, maybe you should play it. Like a I construct's mean, not bad. I guess they, yeah, they, they were they ruling a, the boot correctly there, right? That was yeah, they were ruling Arata, the boot correctly. So, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. close combat expert, you know, so it was an 11 for 3 or whatever it is, right, for the boot. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, what's it called? It was a tough game. He also had Antiope at full dial, um, a Teen Lantern. Teen Lantern's very annoying at 35 points with her little one-click, one single barrier prob from the barrier, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, whatever. At uh, one point, they just barriered in, like, Zeus. Like, they just completely just did made four barriers and just put barrier, barrier, barrier around Zeus. Um, it's really weird, but Zeus can't fly. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, it makes zero sense to me, but Zeus just, he can't fly. So I'm like, oh, you've boxed me in. So it ended up going to be, I needed to make a breakaway roll with Jason. So, like, when you make super senses, you're like, oh, 50 50. I don't even want to attack that guy. I'll probably he'll probably totally get super senses. But then you, you make your own breakaway, and you know it's fifty fifty. You're like, man, I shouldn't even waste time breaking away. I know it's gonna <laughs> fail. Like it just it's so disparaging to try to like make a breakaway. But I sure enough, I made a breakaway with Jason, destroyed the barrier with Zeus, and then triple targeted blam blam blam. You know, killed the rest of his team, which was like a really cool. Oh, and he had one hundred twenty five point Superman, which is also tough in oh, its own man. right to uh, yeah. to get rid of. You know. So, yeah, like, it was a very formidable team. Um, I made the mistake of not one-shotting uh, Hal, Yellow Lantern, Hal Jordan, because he just gets super nasty. Bottom dial, he becomes, like, a 12 for 4. Um, he was sadly only... He was only an 11 for 3. I actually looked at his card. This was the only time, most of the weekend, where I, like, looked at his card and was like, okay, I gotta look at this dude's card, because I know he ramps up, and I don't want to put him on, like, a 12 for 4 or something dumb. So this was the first time I ever like looked at an opponent's card purely because I didn't totally know what their figure did, but I knew enough that I shouldn't put it to like a a place where it's gonna absolutely kill me. Um, so yeah. Anyways, did that, and then yeah, like I was able to clutch out that victory. Sadly, Brandon and David they tried their best, but they were not able to uh, to win either of their games, which means we uh, we went home in top eight. But uh, we're gonna get. Oh, a booster each of Rise and Fall. So we shall see. Um, if you ever get the we booster, pull. yes. If we ever get the booster, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was uh, that was the event, man. Uh, and, sorry, that wasn't the event. Uh, later that, that night, we were going to go out. Like, that was Team Sealed, yeah. We were going to go out to eat, but we were just like waiting way too long for everything. So instead, me and Chad went over to the bar, which is pretty good. Had some good, you know, Chad Birdsall always a great guy you guys heard him on the podcast he's a pretty fun dude to talk with he keeps it pretty real uh so we hung out for a bit later i went to my room uh the chinese food delivery guy was there and uh perfect i was like perfect timing beautiful and i ate some orange chicken and fried rice and called it a night went to went to sleep got rested up for sunday baby sunday was the 400 silver this is the one I, I suppose people are going to be fairly interested in, I guess. Are we, are we skipping about, over who won teams because we don't like Lucas or uh, we don't like PJ? Oh, that's right. They did win. Sorry. Uh, I honestly forgot. Uh, yes, I Edward Shelton. We, we definitely like Ed. So it's, oh, Ed's it's awesome. Gotta be one Ed's the like the best. Team. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, ah, it's a real toss-up between Lucas and PJ, honestly. It's pretty. It's pretty. pretty big toss-up. I'm gonna go Lucas. I'm gonna go Lucas. Even though I was uh, groomsman at his wedding, uh, we're gonna go Lucas. No, but uh, yeah, they won teams. So Phoenix Ness won teams. It was Lucas, PJ, and Edward Sheldon. Edward Sheldon, of course, always a joy. PJ, always alive. Lucas Van Holland, always alive as well. Uh, pretty f- no, they're 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 all good guys. They're all pretty good guys. I also skipped over the banquet by accident here. Um, I didn't have a lot to do with the banquet. I honestly was going to say. Uh, I was gonna skip the banquet. Like even though I paid for it, I was like, I better just bring a book or something. Like I was, just, I was not really excited to do it, honestly. Um, but it was pretty good. The food was awesome. There's some of the best like spaghetti and meatballs I've had ever. Just period. Like it was awesome, awesome food. Um, they did a giveaway for a Sky Tyrant, and the giveaway was who can make a five or like a four hundred point Golden Age team with Sky Tyrant. And you had like two or three minutes to like write down a team on a piece of paper. And so here here was my team. 
my team was Sky Tyrant at 50 points. Then it was Carnage, Groot, and a Moloid for a uh, for 40 points, and then Power Gem. So that's 100 points altogether. The last 300 points. Uh, so for 270 points, I had the Zombies team base, and then uh, at five points each here, we had Electro, Super Scroll, Mole Man, Gladiator, Mobius. Uh, and Juggernaut, I think, were the zombies I chose. I honestly don't remember who I chose off the top of my head, but that's what I went with. And it came down to two teams, mine and somebody else's, to win the Sky Tyrant. And I was like, yes, let's go, zombie team base, baby, coming in clutch. And uh, it, it ended up being a roll-off, and I rolled like a four or something. And I was like, well, this is a load of barnacles. Come on, man, zombie team base is way cooler than, like, Book of the Skull. No offense to Brandon Shastine or Shistine or however I say his name. Um, but yeah. Anyways. didn't Weren't able to clutch that one out. Uh, the main thing about the Clicks Cup like banquet dinner was they were doing a drunk, two drunk battle royales and they were playing Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Lucas uh, Van Holland and Tommy Lytle got in for Phoenix Nest. Um, they were playing, there's also some other people there playing, uh, there was, uh, Manny Kings, and then there was Charles Garst was also playing, um, Manny pulled, uh, Balls of Fury, nice. so, like, awesome luck, but, like, huge instant target on your back, oh, as yeah, far as, like, definitely. you know, Battle Royale goes. I think, probably, like, the real best thing to pull in a Battle Royale would be, like, that Hulk. From, oh yeah, uh, yeah, Agents of Shield. Like, I don't like Hulk or Iron Man. Like one of those it's high point figures. Something that yeah, something that like nobody's or uh, that Black. Oh wait, that's not. I was thinking Black Panther from Age of Ultron. Um, oh no. From Nick Fury. Yeah, the super rares were really like the bread and butter because the chases weren't like that's not a battle royale. Like the no, chases, the chases weren't ever gonna save great, you. But uh, they're even worse in battle royale kind of format. Oh, they bad. They real bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is there was that. Though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, some people got very drunk that night. Uh, it was very <laughs> funny. Uh, I won't say who, but it was hilarious. Uh, it was great. Uh, can, and anyway, I yeah, let me just guesses as to people who were commenting on Facebook threads like late <laughs> that night after oh, boy. the event. I was like, oh man. <laughs> These people have been drinking quite a bit. Yeah, dude, there was... Uh, yeah, people were getting a little rowdy. A little rowdy that night. It was pretty funny. Um, they also did, like, trivia. We did pretty good at trivia, considering our table had way, way less people. There's a part in the video that doesn't make a lot of sense without any contacts, but uh, Wes Summers is yelling at uh, Matty G here in my... Um, travel vlog video and for the context of that is they asked what keywords does the super rare flash from wonder woman have and maddie g got a surprising number of the keywords wrong uh on the figure that he of course designed <laughs> and yes. which uh prompted uh that response we see in the video from wes <laughs> which is pretty pretty funny um yeah so I, I was pretty lucky. I was able to guess all three modern members of Agents of Atlas, which is Amadeus Cho Hulk, Silk, and Kamala Khan from the Fantastic Four set, only because I own one issue of the Agents of Atlas from like a year ago. And uh, yeah, I was like, wow, I can't believe I remembered that. Sweet. It was, uh, it was me, Kevin, Isaac, and Ed Shelton were all on a team for like trivia, which is pretty sweet. I think we did uh, something like... Team America Forever, or like Team Wakanda America, or something like I don't, I can't remember what our team name was, but it was pretty funny. Um, so I was, I was pretty, was pretty, uh, pretty happy about that. Anyways, uh, and then they did like a dice rolling thing where I almost got to like the last, like you know, just roll dice, whatever it was, seven or higher, four or lower, like whatever. Almost made it very high there. So I, this weekend, if we could call it anything, it was Calder almost one weekend. Um, and so I think we can safely now move on to Sunday. And talk about uh, Silver Age here. But no, the banquet was a lot of fun. Uh, Scott Crampton and PJ did a lot better job during the banquet than I thought they were going to do, just being honest here. like I was like, oh, wow, like it was actually pretty funny. They did they had a fun game. They did trivia, kind of just like how the Rock Cup did trivia during their banquet. So it was, it was cool, though. Uh, my team for Sunday, 
uh, the I'll tell you the original build, and then I'll tell you uh, kind of what happened at the event. So the original build was Ares at 125, Awatu at 30, the Venom Prime at 80 points, Molecule Man at 30 points, Marvella at 15, Reign of Terror at 5, Ensign Crusher at 25, and then uh, Dawnbreaker at 75, and then I just slapped on the Mansion Ring and the H Dial, because why not? Uh, as I am in line to do my team and get it registered for the events uh somebody goes hey can i look at dawnbreaker's card and i'm like yeah sure uh they read it and they go your team doesn't work which is a little like disparaging to hear which sucks. it's like oh well can you explain it i guess you know they're just like oh your team doesn't work and i'm like oh that's very cool thank you for saying that can you explain your answer though for the class uh so Dawnbreaker reads, choose a... It's like, it basically it has to be an opposing character, an opposing figure that generates the bystander. Ares says an opposing force generates a bystander next to a character, which really sucked um, because I had practiced with this team this way with Dawnbreaker. Um, you know, and it's it wasn't totally on me because I was stealing the idea from Kevin, and then you know, I, I talked with like Lucas and stuff about it, and I was like, hey man, like I, like, I told you what the team did, and everything is like, pfft, you know, like, it, it just, it is what it is, like, and then it, as you're in line. Character. Oh, because, yeah, yeah, so whenever an opposing character generates one or more bystanders, so the keyword is opposing character generates the bystander, and yeah. Ares is opposing force instead, so since there's not an, a, there's not a specific character that's generating it, according to Ares, Ares says, um... Let's see. When he uses it, succeeds allied soldier or a German soldier bystander. If you do, an opponent also generates. So, yeah, Ares gives an opponent a yeah allied soldier or German to generate. Yeah, that is a very specific, and I, I have to imagine the person that asked to see Dawnbreaker's card had already looked at that, like, combo, because there's I, no I way I would have noticed so. that. You know, and I, I don't want to blow up anybody's spot about who it was. It was a member of Phoenix Nest, and there were two other members of Phoenix Nest this day also playing a mission points build similar to mine, but not using uh, Dawnbreaker. So I assume, you know, being the think tank that that team sort yeah, of is, or most teams are. Yeah, passed around yeah, at some point. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And so me not being a member of the inner circle or privy to that information just didn't get it. So, it like, so like that, honestly... Um, uh, took like the wind completely out of my sails. I was like, "Oh well, then I can only kill one pog a turn, and I, you just can't, you can't win that way. Not with Ares. Like you just, you can't do it by killing one pog each turn. Like I can try. It'll be marginally slower because before you would always win on like turn seven or eight or like whatever. Like just fact. Like if you kill two pogs every single turn, based on how mission points go and like the ramp up and everything, you would always win on like turn seven or eight. Um, and instead, like halfway through, I'm just like, ah, oh, geez, I don't know what to replace 75 points with because there's just nothing that works with this team the way it should work. So I, I end up just putting DJ Doom on the team with a full set of sideline Dooms because that's never bad, I guess. Um, and we just we're gonna get roll into play. I honestly wanted to drop out, like as lame as it sounds, like my team just didn't work the way I wanted it to. I was like, well, this yeah. this sucks. You know, it just it just completely took the wind out of my sails, and I was like, well, I kind of don't want to play. You know, it was Sunday. It was after three long days of, like, playing Hero Quakes, you know. I was just like, maybe I could drop out, take a nap, go to the hotel gym or whatever, walk around, go to the pool or, like, something, you know, and just not play. Like, that's, like, that's sadly, like, that's not a good mindset to have for anybody ever, but that's, like, that's sort of, like, what went through my mind when it's like, oh, your team doesn't work. And... I am glad that they told me. Number one, I'm glad I didn't get there and then someone called the judge on it and then be like, hey, this dude's team doesn't work. Because then that would have really sucked. Right? I am at least glad that it was in line for registration that uh, right. they let me know. You yeah, know, so, so you can at the very least. Salvage part of like what your plan is. Yeah. But yet, it, yeah. it's very disheartening to have an idea and like have even practiced the, like, the idea and then be told like right before you expect to play it's already like yeah. a pretty stressful time when you're uh getting like you know your team like you know 
ready to go against your first match and see where your pairings are and stuff. I imagine yeah. that's pretty not necessarily earth shattering, but it's definitely like no. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, mean, I wouldn't feel bad if I was just like I'm gonna bounce. I think uh, Cartoon Network has like a Courage the Cowardly Dog marathon. I'm gonna go catch that. I'll be in the hotel room. See you guys. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not even in the bed, but of course, watching in like in the bathroom mirror TV, just sitting there like, <laughs> oh man, yeah, so sad. So, so um, but can, yeah, uh, cry directly into like the sink, into the sink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, so we went with DJ Doom and the full set of Dooms. So really quick, fun fact about DJ Doom: because how his replace effect works at the beginning of the game, you can play him, equip him with the time platform, all that jazz. Swap him out at the beginning of the game. The time platform will drop wherever he was. Then you can have the other Doom pick it up. Power action pick it up. Just because of how, like, replacement effects work yeah. and uh, equipment is, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so, first game. Uh, I played against a... It wasn't even a theme team, I don't think, but it they still beat me with map because my team's not a theme team either. But it was, like, double King Shark and, like, double Black Manta and Blackbeard. It was, like, this very water-heavy team. Which is why it was weird that they put me on the ROC States map, the Crystal Underground Cavern or whatever. I'm like, there is oh, water, and it's a pretty like, big st- okay. like stretch. But not it wasn't like, and I don't know if Flashpoint Flood is legal anymore or whatever, but like not like a map like that or something, you know, which I thought was strange. But anyways, I was like, well, I'll, I'll try to do what I try to do. I, I swapped out to all caps Doom. No, actually, no, I didn't. I actually rolled like a... Uh, a two and a five with DJ Doom. So I was like, okay, I think I'm going to keep this. Um, so I still play DJ Doom. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to start doing the thing. So basically how the team works, guys, is Ares makes a bystander. Um, if he succeeds at leadership, I have the Reign of Terror, which lets me reroll if I win map. And then I have Ensign Crusher, which just always lets me reroll. Ares succeeds on a four through six leadership, so it's 50-50. He makes a bystander every turn. And then Venom, uh, when he charges, after resolutions, you deal one penetrating damage to all characters, and it specifically says friendly or opposing. So I have Venom uh, charge in place to kill the bystander. Um, Normally, what I was doing was I would make two, because Dawnbreaker would let me make two, and then I would just kill two, kill two, clear, kill two, kill two, clear, right? Like, that was how Venom worked. That's how, that was what the flow of the team was supposed to be. And then Molecule Man, Barriers, Smoke Cloud, roll for that, Marvella, Barriers, whatever. And then Awatu was just on the team, just to have one other way to get mission points, just in case. Um, and so now I'm, I'm rolling with this team, I'm trying to do like the same thing as I was going to do before, but I'm like, man, only killing one at a time means my turns have to be like that. They have to be crazy fast, and my opponent needs to take fast turns as well. Um, but... I got, you know, fairly lucky where I was like, in my mind, I'm like, I have to play more forward with this team, which means I have to kill their German as well, which is tough to do against King Shark and not having any TK. Uh, lucky for me, I got myself in a, f- a well enough position that I was able to win by mission points thanks to Awatu re-rolling uh, stuff and him re-rolling stuff and getting mission points and then killing my own guys and then also... But it was like turn probably 10 or 11 or whatever. It's like, I just had to play faster. I had to do whatever. But I still won my first game off mission points. 400 sweep. Felt great because I didn't kill anything else on the team. But when you win by mission points, it's as if their force is defeated. So you just get the full whatever the build is. So I you know, turn in my sheet. Feel pretty good. Uh, sit down. Uh, next game. Uh, the judge walks up to me. And he's like, hey, next time you win by mission points, tell us. And I was like, oh. Um, I looked up the rules. Like, I, I did the point scoring, right? Like, I didn't. Like, I thought he was like. Um, scolding me for like doing something wrong and I was like oh man no, I I did it right that's how it's supposed to be and he's like no 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 because it's cool and I'm like oh yeah no it is cool <laughs> you know so anyways uh, next game I go against and I'm not going to say this dude's name um, because I don't want to be negative or anything but it, he was probably one of the slowest players I have ever played against we I think we each had like three turns maybe Dang. Yeah, it was no it was painful that's probably in my opinion, the hardest part of mission points to get past, like the hardest, the hardest point isn't necessarily racking up the points. It's if you and your opponent aren't both taking quick turns, because like I can force quick turns out of myself. I can be like, all right, like this is what I'm going to do. Super simple turn. Be like leadership barrier, pass turn, like leadership, shoot this guy, 
move here past turn like you know that i can make my turns really quick if i think that we're like running low on time but if your opponent just does not care does not why well, care to like make the turns fast yeah there's no no accounting for that really yeah it, it can be uh be pretty rough so i lost that one he's able to kill like watu and something else i don't know it was pretty low scoring game halfway through i was like ah maybe i should try to play more offensively but with the map we were on and where he was positioned there's nothing i could like easily kill with like just by throwing venom out there so kind of you know a turn too late and by a turn too late i mean on the second turn i got i uh i threw venom out there to try to make some some kills you know it would have been good i this is where venom needs to have ignore his characters so bad because then i could have killed like his q and a few other things and like maybe could have just won by a normal hero clicks game <laughs> and just like win by points points yeah, right. uh because like there is some offensive like my team has guts you know yeah that was one thing to, you have to about for it, that exact okay. reason if your opponent like not necessarily chooses to slow play you but if they're like their tempo is just much slower um or if they choose to slow play you like whatever um, whichever possible. i will i will I will say this really quick to this person's credit. Uh, he wasn't a slow player. He was a slow player, if that makes sense for people. Yeah. He wasn't intentionally playing slow to run out the clock. He was just, you know, for some people that, you know, I'm, and I'll give people the benefit of the doubt for getting back into the game after a long time, playing a fairly complex team, all this, whatever. It's just, it can be hard to make choices, you know? So... Yeah, but at the same absolutely. time, the, the individual was just pretty slow. Uh, anyways, lose that game. Go to the next game. I go against uh, this dude who is playing all Ghost Riders with the Mammoth Ghost Rider. So not like a meta team by any means, but if he gets on me and whatever, and that's like that's two penetrating damage that I'm taking every time I attack a Ghost Rider, unless I kill Mammoth right away. And then even then... That's a lot of penetrating damage that I have to take when I kill a Ghost Rider. Uh, but I also want him to get as close to me as possible because I want the German soldiers to be as close to me as possible, like, as well. So he wins map, puts me on whatever, bad map, uh, negative zone, I think, because it has the extended starting areas. I'm in negative zone. We're chilling. I, you know, I'm just trying to barrier up, do my thing. But he just he gets that close to me. He has enough people to make enough attacks to destroy the two layers of barrier that I was able to make. Sadly, Molecule Man biffed it on his uh, whatever roll. I wasn't able to have like three layers thick of barrier. So he was like, did two shots of barrier. And then it just started like he got too close where it was like, I can't really barrier anymore. So I've got to start punching people. So uh, still we're able to win off mission points in this game. Uh, between Awatu actually like got me like two or three mission points just because of like the amount of attacks that were being made. Maybe even four. He, he got like more than any other time Awatu got points. So like thanks to Awatu, I was able to win a little bit faster, which is pretty cool. And then just making all those attacks was okay because then I was like, oh sweet. Um, if you you all have Mystics, so when I make my Allied Soldier, I just have to have him punch somebody. You know, uh, sadly <laughs> all of them have. Uh, like invulnerability so i had to like punch someone with somebody else first to put them on toughness on these ghost riders but still i was like cool allied soldier can kill himself that way that way i don't have to like worry about placement with venom and the german soldier i can just send venom out to kill the german soldier swing on something else and then it totally works out pretty well so that just goes to where like my opponent played forward and i played forward so instead of just the turtling mission points type normal what the build is supposed to be where it's like solitaire you just turtle up you kill your own guys you get mission points you win eventually um so like just because of how my team had to change i had to change my play style lucky for me uh having something like venom on the team uh honestly aries in his own right and then of course freaking dr doom uh led me to have quite a solid amount of offense not like the best offense no way at all but that Venom is very good. I mean, a tens, he's a full speed charge. He attacks and he deals a penetrating damage to everybody next to him after resolutions. That Venom is awesome. I like that Venom a lot. Um, he's like old school Shredder's tech almost. I shouldn't even say old school. They rotated not that long ago, yeah, but whatever. But still, I mean, yeah, ping. It's ping uh, damage. New tech, ping damage, or yeah. old old tech, new fig. Yeah. 
basically. So I ended up getting uh, two mission point wins, two losses that day. I felt cool with it. Um, apparently, like I now hold the tournament official tournament record for mission points wins, which is really really cool. I'm very excited I was able to do that. So like that's awesome. Um, and I like I didn't think I honestly didn't think it was like a crazy big deal just because I've been looking at mission points and like have. I've kind of like feel like yeah, Ares is pretty viable, and like obviously two other people thought that as well. Um, they didn't do as well as I did, <laughs> but uh, still, they like they knew it. So I was pretty happy with that. Uh, Joe uh, Pengrazio put some articles up on Clicks Nexus about it, sort of haphazardly mentions me, which I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Just have the most wins. It's like whatever, you know. I, I know, I know, no one wants to give Dial H the no time big of day, deal, but that's but that's okay. I will say, kind yeah, of a big uh, deal. Yeah, Clicks Nexus did did name drop dial h uh as well as calder of course uh but yeah uh i i don't you know it's it's not winning a 300 modern uh, states uh, or you know something super well, crazy good like that i uh, it's definitely just don't uh, think you can the most points, competitive wins with a uh yeah. with a mission points build in modern well not modern in uh history current history there we go that's right that's right thank you <laughs> some respect on my name anyways uh, i know we went to disney springs and we walked around and we had a good time uh i wore uh i bought some new jorts for the rowdy ranch and character which i broke in while i was in florida because i'm like you know florida is like sh shorts weather so i was wearing my jorts i was i did full rowdy ranch and to uh, disney springs i wore a cut off uh button shirt i wore my jorts had my hat, my boots, and everything. Uh, a child pointed and laughed at me. So that was uh, a, a highlight of the weekend. Uh, yeah. Cut real deep. Cut real deep there, Timmy. Um, this is good anyways, idea. yeah, we went to Florida Springs. It was, a, it was a good time. Went to Planet Hollywood. Planet Hollywood has... It was probably the cringiest restaurant I've ever been to. Um, good food, though. Uh, bacon mac and cheeseburger, as Tommy or as Austin Lytle said in the Clicks Cl Cup vlog video it was like an awesome burger but the restaurant was very 2005 feeling ghetto like knockoff like they would do like coming soon here's the action hour they would never play like real trailers to real movies wow. but they would show like bad clip art someone on It'd table like, five asked for double cheese well, no, not even anything like that. There was a ton of people having birthdays, apparently. That would have been they had, like, tons of, like, clip art where it was, like, happy birthday, Alyssa. And it was, like, a picture of Elsa or something. They would do, like, sing-alongs every once in a while where it would be, like, some random popular song. And it's, like, everybody get up and sing. And our, like, waiter was, like, come on, guys, get up and sing. And it's, like, whoa, yeah, we're halfway there. It's, like, very awkward. Like, no, I'm not going to sing in a restaurant. What are you talking about, bro? Um... So yeah, but it, it was a fun experience. They had cool stuff there, like the uh, Charlie Cox screen worn like Daredevil suit, and like a uh, Spider-Man three Spider-Man suit, which was neat. So, um, and then we just went home, and I bought souvenirs for my friends and family at Old Disney Springs, which was a good time. You can also buy the most expensive Blu-ray ever at Disney Springs. Uh, they have Captain Marvel on Blu-ray in the Marvel Store for forty dollars. Oh my gosh! Right? <laughs> like is... what? That's a what a markup! Yes. That was a 2019 film, was it not? Had to have been, yeah. Very much so. It wasn't before... very much in 2019. Yeah. Wow. 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 Came uh, so yeah, that was, game. and and then dollars. that was, Florida, right, dude? Isn't that just stupid? Um, and that was pretty much Florida. We went to the airport the next day. We just hung out in the hotel room. We had a very chillaxing Monday. Went to the airport, uh, eventually flew out after I bought a few more souvenirs at the airport gift shops because uh, I wasn't able to get all of them at Disney Springs. Um, and then, yeah, we flew out to, uh, I believe we went to Atlanta. And as we're chilling in Atlanta, I, you know, shout out to Bantams and Biddies because they had some awesome home style cook, cooked food. I had a roasted chicken. I had some potatoes. I had some mac and cheese and I had a biscuit. It was 10 bucks for all of that for airport prices wow. and it was so good like home cooked part of this entire food. tale <laughs> right $10 not like for a full <sighs> meal at an airport right like oh yeah yeah okay two wins of mission points whatever whatever you got that for 10 bucks at an airport <laughs> <laughs> truly <laughs> like dude really mission i was points, excited mission points i need to find this restaurant that has cheap yeah, airport dude. food 
Yeah, honestly, worth the flight to Atlanta Airport, whatever one it was. Uh, Bantams and Biddies, man, awesome, awesome place. And I was, I was gonna sleep on that roasted chicken. If the person in front of me didn't get all the chicken tenders, I was probably just gonna do that because I just wanted to, you know, eat it with like my hands. I didn't want to have to like, you know, touch this roasted chicken with my hands and get all greasy and gross or whatever. But uh, thankfully, he took all of them, and I got to have a roasted chicken. I'm like, man, I'm so glad I didn't sleep on it. It was delicious. Uh, so, yeah. And then uh, we get back in Sioux Falls at 10 o'clock, and I drive back to Vermilion, and I get home at, like, 1130, and I pass out. And that was the Clicks Cup. Wild, wild times. But it was super fun. It was the biggest thing. And I talked a lot about playing games. And, yeah, in my opinion, I did really well at, like, all the events proud of myself as like as far as like a hero close player goes for making top 16 for making top eight um for doing well with the mission points thing and all like that jazz like so i was just really happy about like my like personal record and everything for that event um but the coolest thing the most like just great thing was meeting uh listeners uh, Patreon members also was really cool seeing like them in person showing up. Chance McCall wasn't able to make it. That's okay. Um, we all we understand. He lives like three hours away, but still just couldn't make it. That's okay. Um, but like meet, met like a new cool dude, dude. Like me and this dude named Mike became like just freaking best friends over the event. Super chill dude. Big Captain America fan. Very similar like sense of humor and all that jazz. We played a battle royale with, together, which was really fun. Um, like it was just, it was great. Like he was a super cool guy. Uh, other people in the past, and I just, I don't want to name drop too many people because they'll get mad if I don't name drop everybody. So I'm going to stop name dropping people. Um, but like there was just, there's people that just walked up and they were like, yo man, I love your videos on YouTube. And I was, you know, and I, I got a little selfish. I was like, Hey, which ones do you like? But at the same time, I'm like, Hey, if I know which ones they like, I can know to make more of them. And so some people are like, you know, we like the sculpt swap videos. We like the team building videos, like all that stuff. Uh, you know, one dude is like, I just like the, the stupid, dumb videos that you make too. And I'm like, hey, man, those stupid, dumb videos, those are my favorite as well. So like, I'm not going to take any. And I and trust me, nobody knows more than me that they're stupid and dumb. I'm well aware. So, so yeah, like that, that was just, it meant a lot to me just because like, Whenever I, when I first went to nationals after like being on Dial H for a year, I was like, yeah, I'm a pretty big deal. People are gonna probably walk up to me all over the place, and no one, no one at all talked to me at nationals. Zero people like talked to me the first time I went to nationals in 2018, and that was like this real like gut check, humbling moment, which I was very thankful for. And now I just I come to just not expect it at all. Like, okay, Dial H exists, but there's too many people that play this game. We're a casual podcast. I'm going to competitive tournaments. I understand people don't really list. That's not that's not their jam. And then like the more I go to stuff and the more I see people who like say they listen, that just means so much and it gets me really excited as I've been rambling for like almost an actual hour here about the Clicks Cup. But like it gets me so excited to go to these tournaments and see listeners and talk to people that listen to the show because I want to make it and the, like the YouTube videos and everything. I want to make them good and I want to make them entertaining for everybody. So I just I love seeing people like that do that. It's it's awesome. I also ran into some people um, who go to Alex Morse's venue in Michigan. Really? Uh, so like that was yeah that was pretty cool. So I was like That's wow, sweet. all the way from Michigan go, yeah. coming down here, which is sweet. So yeah, like that was also That's pretty a cool. Trick, yeah, yeah. So like I was like nice, you know. And I was like hey man, tell uh tell Alex to uh, lower them freaking singles prices. I know he'd be scalping you guys. Uh, <laughs> jo- jokingly of course. I said that jokingly of course. Um, and I was like, hey, have you guys listened to the latest episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks? Because your uh, judge or whatever is on there, you know? Like, like that was cool. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was just an awesome, fun weekend. Seeing everybody, interacting with everybody. Yeah, I just, like, nothing's better for me in Hero Clicks than the, uh, the fellowship of it all. So yeah, it was great. Yeah. To, to cap sure. it off, it was just great. Okay. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully, like, Clicks Cup and... Um just like the the idea of clicks cup kind of spreads i know we've got like roc states and we've got wkos and we've got like smaller kind of stuff like that but i do like i mean i i feel like uh when it's more community based or community driven um 
it's just like a much more interesting thing. Plus, I like the multi weekend event. Like, give me a reason to be there for more than a day, and I'm yeah. much more likely to travel for it. Um, of course, I didn't travel for this one, but that's that. That was more because I just had, I've had a lot of like different stuff going on like lately, and just I've not caught a break <laughs> where I could actually request time off for like a extended weekend and i would definitely need an extended weekend to recover from something like oh. that <clears throat> yeah dude but i didn't i i got very lucky in the fact that the air quality in our area instantly turned to you'll die if you work outside and so i basically got the whole week not having to do anything because of like the smoke from like canada oh, okay. or whatever would just kill you if you worked for too long outside it's like i think i worked like Wednesday and then that was it and just worked inside the whole time just doing whatever you know like not a lot of inside ranch work you can do fun fact no, listeners true. not not a ton so it was like working on like cosplay which is super nice um and of course actually emptying my hero clicks bag and organizing my hero clicks and putting the cards back and putting the figures back which I'm not gonna lie guys sometimes when I get done with a hero clicks event even a weekly one that will sit on my table for weeks before I actually like put the figures and cards back and everything. Uh, it's just the way it be. It's just the way it be. Um, but yeah, so that is the Clicks Cup. Hopefully everybody uh, got something out of that, but we are getting pretty long in the tooth for this episode. So let's go ahead, jump to some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! All right, first question on Discord comes from Bill who says, what if the DC Lantern Corps existed in Marvel? Name a character for each color. So, just to go down the line, uh, we've got red for rage, orange for greed, yellow for fear, green for willpower, blue for hope, indigo for compassion, violet for love, and then uh, the two bonus colors, of course, being white for life and black for death. Um, but yes, a a character from Marvel for each of those colors. Okay. Um, should I go through my whole list of colors or should we go back and um, forth? Let's do, yeah, let's do back and forth, I think. Okay, so I'll go with red first because that's my, that's like the easiest for me. That's the most simple one. And of course, that's just going to be Wolverine who has, you know, the whole ber berserker rage. That's, that's his whole... Not his whole gimmick, but that's a that's a big part of his gimmick. I think he'd make an excellent Red Lantern, and then he could fly, and that's just super cool. What kind of constructs would he make? Uh, big old claws, probably, because he's not super clever. So, okay. Uh, for Red, I first wrote down Hulk, and then I'm like, that wouldn't be very color thematic, so I put Red Hulk in front of it. Um, and I think Red Hulk is good for it. Uh, he does the whole burning rage thing, and I think he could make some creative constructs because, like, Thunderbolt Ross is a little more present when he's in his Hulk persona, so he could do something like tanks and jets, like artillery, or, like, something like militaristic, like, constructs for Red Hulk. I think that would be cool. Yeah. That actually, yeah, that actually does make a lot because, yeah, he is uh, a smarter, uh, like, Hulk kind of person. Uh, right. For orange, I said Norman Osborn because uh, he's probably like the closest thing Marvel has to Lex Luthor, um, in my opinion, I guess. Like Doom would have been a fun one, but I think Norman's just a lot cooler, especially, well, excuse me. Uh, I think Norman's a cooler choice for Orange Lantern because uh, his dual identity kind of thing whereas doom is like he could probably be above the orange lantern ring uh norman would definitely use it to, to try and like defeat the avengers one more time or something yeah i definitely feel like norman is like the dude who like he'll just try to use anything he can to possibly like you know he's like oh man the serum goblin thing didn't work all <laughs> right. right iron man suit now uh, what, i didn't what if work I either take over shield and read yeah. something ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. You have a shield. What else would go with a shield? Well, sword is taken, so... Mm, a hammer! Yes! Yeah, okay, Norman. Um, uh, for orange, I have scribbled out, in order, Tony Stark, 
Doctor Doom, Norman Osborn, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I. Orange was really hard to pick. Orange is a um, hard one, yeah. Like so, and uh, yeah, I honestly didn't write anything down, so I might think of something later. But I genuinely was like, man, I have zero clue. Let's write down Orange. So I guess I'm going to go with the Collector. Okay, so yeah, he's yeah. pretty greedy, dude. You know. So that's yeah, that's that's what I can think of. So yeah, Collector for Orange. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, next up, Green Lantern Ring. So. I always kind of hated that they went with like so when it was originally just the one lantern ring and it was just like oh they use willpower and then they introduced the spectrum and they're like oh it's different like emotions I was like willpower just does not make sense to me as an emotion because like I don't know humans innately have like willpower like it to varying levels and I I don't know. I don't. I don't want to get into the whole thing. I just think it's a weird thing to quantify and be like, ah, yes, Hal Jordan had more willpower than Batman. That's why his constructs are better than Batman's. That kind of thing. Um, but that being said, somebody that I think has an extreme amount of like willpower in the Marvel universe. I don't think that you could pick anybody more uh, full of will than uh, the Red Skull. Um, just mm. as a will, oh. he's willing to go forward with it at any cost. He's probably, you know, he is a villain, but like, so is Sinestro in some storylines. So, you know, there's, mm. you know, <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting choice. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just couldn't pick, I had, I had guessed what Calder would pick for this one. And so I had to make mine the opposite. That's the uh, entire reason. Dude, I might be wrong, but uh, you actually. Uh, so I feel a little bit better because this is a little more egg on Simeon's face. Um, I did not choose Captain America for okay. willpower. Okay. Uh, I chose Daredevil. Um, I feel like the willpower to like keep going and go against like the odds of like being blind. Uh, having to be a lawyer in New York, you know, all those terrible things. Plus, he's like the man without fear, and like that was like the yellow versus green is like the sure. main yeah, yeah. thing, right? Sense. So, like, I know, like, without fear doesn't necessarily mean have willpower, but like, I just feel like that sort of like fits. Sure. So, Still, I, yeah, I ended up choosing Daredevil the cross for uh, for green, yeah. But uh, good, it, <laughs> I'm not even gonna say good, but what a no, pick I, there, I, I, that was entirely like a. Okay. No answer, but I, yeah, I only did that because I thought Calder would possibly pick Cap for willpower. Um, that being said, it's not incorrect, even though no, Carl it's Hans not. Schmidt is like um, a super evil dude. It's just, uh, it's. Yeah. I don't know if that's the a, the a traits that he exudes the most of. Um, for no. being a in any of he the core actually necessarily. Might, he might be a better pick for the Yellow Lantern fear. Um, um, is that what you have next? Is yellow, or yes, what do you have next? That's on your what list? I have. Next. Um, yeah, to skip you know. a little bit, that is who I chose for yellow. Was the red okay. skull? I went with I went with the red skull. But yeah, who is who is your yellow pick? So my yellow pick was I actually went with the Punisher because Ooh. Um, similar to like Batman, the Punisher like v- definitely like uses fear as like a weapon, uh, but not quite in the same way as Batman because he prefers like actual weapons to the psychological warfare uh but yeah the punisher is definitely like a scary dude uh in marvel comics like if i if i was just an average person living in the 616 universe the last person that i would want to be hunting me would probably be the punisher uh because that's just like game over kind of situation um also that means that i'm probably a terrible person so I'd have yeah. to live with that for whatever Frank Castle deemed to be the rest of my life. Uh, next, <laughs> it's true. Let's go with let's go with the blue lantern ring and right. we'll go with hope. So uh, for this one, I kind of I don't know. I kind of like went like out of I don't I don't know how closely this fits, but I went with Cable from the X Men because um, Cable like comes from a ruined future. But his whole 
like idea is that he like he has hope to fix that future at least when he was first introduced let's i guess like i i don't know what cable's been up to in the last couple uh reiterations of him because now there's like young cable or whatever yeah, yeah they haven't cable... used him a lot since just streaming services have gotten more popular they don't use him much anymore uh, uh keep going bad uh, joke uh, let's skip past it uh, uh how would you like to bundle your cable with wade wilson or uh, uh there you go. I, I don't know uh but yeah i just think uh i don't think he exudes hope but i think he personifies it in like um in like an unspoken kind of way especially i mean in the deadpool 2 movie like that's what drives him is like uh, it's not it's not really like revenge or whatever it's hope for like a better life in the future um because yeah it's not it's not like he's like mad and he wants to like like punish people or like you know he's not he like seems greedy. pretty mad well, he, he does, but it, I think the driving factor there is, you know, it's the hope for, like, his his daughter to, like, have... I think he has a daughter? I don't know. He holds, like, a weird teddy bear. Maybe he just has, like, a Beanie Baby collection that gets destroyed in the future. He actually wanted to go back in time to get more Beanie Babies. <laughs> <laughs> just ruined that movie for people. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, so I, I chose, uh, for hope, I chose Steve Rogers for hope. I think... Uh, someone you can like look up to as like a symbol of like perseverance or hope or like whatever um is steve just be like and i don't think that's like the perfect like fit for steve either but like just like the way he is like with the american dream and everything i'd be like yeah caps the guy for it so yeah so that's what i ended up choosing charles xavier wouldn't make a bad hope either um oh man i don't like that guy because who's to say if he didn't like make you like him, you know, um, next up I have Indigo, which is compassion. This one's kind of hard, but I, I w was split. Uh, it seems like a very guardians of the galaxy kind of thing. So I went with Mantis, uh, with Groot okay. being like a possible second option. Um, just cause Groot is like very self-sacrificing, but Mantis is mm. like, a in the comics from like the ones that I've read, which, to be fair, is not a lot. Uh, Mantis doesn't pick like pop up a lot in the ones that I've read, um, but seems to be like a fairly selfless, compassionate person. Um, and by that, I mean like not compassionate, like only when it is like part of like one of their like relationships. You know, you could say like, oh, like Cyclops is passionate, compassionate to like Jean Grey, uh, but there's like a a reason. You know, he's not like compassionate to just everyone. Uh, especially not sentinels when he blasts them with his laser eyes. Um, very true. Uh, so who I went with for compassion is someone you just mentioned, but was uh, Professor X. Um, I feel like opening the school and him versus Magneto, he is taking the compassionate, kind approach to the mutant debate. Now, I know Professor X has done some controversial things, uh, but I didn't read any of those comics, so I don't know. <laughs> um, so just to me, Professor X is a very like, compassionate dude, taking in young mutants, giving them a place to stay, you know, trying to find them and protect them and make sure they don't go to the, uh, you know, cigarette-smoking, graffiti-having <laughs> punk mutants over there over at the, the Brotherhood. The 90s you know, mutant hangout. The ones yeah. that like to stay at over, you know stay late at uh, school for detention because they have to, but then skip detention anyway and, like, drive hey, their kid. older brother's car to the mall or whatever. Hey, kid, you know? we're all gonna hang out in, uh... <laughs> what are... We're all gonna hang out in Age of Apocalypse later and smoke, yeah. some, smoke some mutant <laughs> cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, whatever. We're gonna... We're gonna drink coke and pop rocks. It's gonna be a pretty wild time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the Brotherhood does, man, but I think Professor X... On surface level, as a fairly compassionate dude. Nice. Uh, so last of the the main rings, I guess, uh, is Violet, which is the the love uh, emotional spectrum ring. Um, for this one, I had to go with Star Fox because uh, he's got those super cool pheromones that he uses to <laughs> seduce people or whatever, and uh, I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> To be like, to be honest, um, yeah, I wanted to do Wolverine again. 
Oh, just because I don't so know many of his relationships one, end horribly. But then yeah. I was like, yeah, he's he's not really like a super. How many of my person. own partners have I murdered? <laughs> now, maybe not my fault necessarily, but still, it's an odd number there. Uh, I chose Star Fox as well. I couldn't think of anyone uh, better. Um, part of me was like maybe Mary Jane because she's always been very like loving and supportive of Peter Parker. But I feel like people would be like, no, you should choose a superhero for that answer. So I don't know. Like that was like it was between like Star Fox and Mary Jane. But um, that makes me think like J. Jonah Jameson would have been a good option for rage or or greed, maybe. Yeah. Or fear. Yeah. Yeah. J. Jonah. Yeah. 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 Hey, he's got he's got a lot going on. Wow. He does, yeah. Jay Jonas, he's a really uh, he's a three dimensional character. <laughs> Maybe a two D comic, but he's a three dimensional character. Um, but yeah. Uh, next up is life. So for life, I went with Moon Knight uh, because he was like he was resurrected by Khonshu, the Egyptian god of death, or whatever. I I honestly mm. don't know the lore, yeah. but uh, he was resurrected. Mark Spector was. Um, and I, I feel like that's pretty much all it takes to get whatever that emotion is, the life emotion. Or life, yeah. Yeah. I don't that's the thing. I, I'm like, how do you exude stronger life energy than because that's like what powers the ring, right? Like kind of what I'm we, very uh, angry. Yeah. I'm stronger red lantern than someone that's only kind of angry. If I'm a white lantern. How do you like gauge how lifeful my power, like my, I don't know, it's like someone that's really old, stronger because they've lived longer, or is it someone that's like less likely to die? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't get it either. I haven't read that much about the White Lanterns necessarily to know exactly what it's all about. Um, I chose someone similar to you, uh, but Mister Immortal. Uh, I know his thing is dying, but he always comes back to life. So someone who can't die or really fully experience death is absent from death. So he's just life. So yeah, Mr. Immortal uh, was my pick there. Seems fair enough, yeah. Uh, And then last, but definitely not least, is the Black Lantern core, which is death. Uh, For this one, I went with Morbius because he is the living dead. Uh, He is a vampire, and I couldn't think of... I, I just couldn't think of anything that like made like Dracula is also in yeah. Marvel. There's several also characters true. have died and come back, but I didn't really, I don't know. Like, yeah. But like black lantern, they're sort of like living as like zombies. Right. So they're like that undead type so thing. Is it, uh, so it's not necessarily it someone that dies that and comes guy, back. That's yeah. like the, the main one or, or no, I mean, I guess, the, technically Necron. the main one is Necron the yeah yeah the, like the celestial one but um I yeah I just again do not understand how you can exude death as like a right emotion I, I don't know maybe if I was a teenager again and it was like full of angst I'd be like yes you can exude death as an emotion yes I do it all the time but uh, black sadly, eyeliner and Black nail exactly. polish, <laughs> Simeon <laughs> Bruce, yeah. angsty freshman Simeon <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Uh, for death, uh, I chose death. Uh, the chick Thanos oh, be sent yeah, that after. Fair so enough. I just, I was like, yeah, I mean, she's, she's death. Like, <laughs> like if it fits, wear it, you know? So yeah, that's what I went with. Seems, I think it works. I think it ought to anyways. Yeah. And then um, uh, on top of that, I'll I'll read Bill's answers on Discord real quick. Uh, Green Lantern went with Doom. Uh, for Yellow, went with Thanos. That's Fear. Uh, Red, Wolverine as well. Uh, blue was Steve Rogers. Orange was the Kingpin, which also makes quite a bit of sense. Uh, yeah. Star Sapphire uh, was Star Fox. So I guess. I didn't even realize. Yeah. I didn't read these until now. I didn't realize I kind of piggybacked on a few of these. Uh, Indigo Tribe was Storm, which also makes sense to me. And then uh, Black Lantern was Wonder Man, and White Lantern was Jean Grey. Both have died multiple times, I believe. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's Wonder Man? Simon? Is that his name? Simon? Yeah, Simon Williams. Okay, yeah. 
who is uh, currently I don't know if his brainwaves are still the vision or like whatever, but like like based off of it. Something yeah, something like that. It. Yeah, that's I don't know. Uh um, I, I very much have stopped caring about Wonder Man uh for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> for quite I think while. most people have, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. Interesting. Uh, so next question uh, we've got is from Chance McCall, who says, if you were to build a team around the Cosmic Clash starter doom, what would it be? Uh, I'm, uh, to, to piggyback off of Cody here, he says uh, Buckshot <laughs> for sure, which is beautifully fitting. Um, if you guys haven't yet, check out my Cosmic Clash starter set review video. Um, in that, I do indeed build or... I do something around a uh, Doctor Doom, which is pretty, pretty funny. I had a good time filming it. Also, big thanks to uh, Alex Morris over at the stadium for sending that to me for free, <laughs> so I could ultimately do what I did to it, which is awesome. Uh, it was great, great fun uh, to like unironically build a team around this dude. I would just put Doom three hundred points plus zero point uh, Latvian Village and just. Oh yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't um, like this dude. Like he's cool, but like I, yeah, I he, wouldn't build a yeah, team around. He kind of got upstaged by, by in my God. opinion, by God Emperor Doom. Yeah, at least for sure on the hundred point line. Um, still kind of like a toss up, like higher dial because the uh, Fantastic Four uh, clash. Yeah, I think he might mid honestly be. Better higher dial than like at the hundred point line for sure. Yeah, just because of of it. I, but yeah, I don't know. They've got a lot of differences, but um, yeah, I would if I was building like a three hundred point team, uh, I would still probably put this Doom, the Cosmic Clash one at two hundred, and then just fill out the rest with, of course, that Latvian Village, and then just Doom bots. Um, maybe you throw on, uh, what's his son's name? I don't know. The, the lesser of the dooms. Uh, maybe you throw on, I don't know. Oh, he's like Kristoff. Kristoff? Yeah. That, Kristoff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe you throw on Kristoff at like 40 points or something, but honestly, I just like the doom bots way more than most other Latvian stuff. I think doom bots are a ton of fun. Uh, but yeah. Little spendy, uh, right it out oh, now in the true. current market, yeah. but uh, they are tons of fun. If you got them, good job, you got them. Uh, all right, let's see what do we got next here. Next question is yeah, uh, my brain from, was loading there, Simi <laughs> from Ben Jones. Uh, and last one we're gonna do this episode. Uh, we've got a, a little bit of catching up to do on these because we've it's been a couple weeks. But Ben Jones on our Discord says. How many times do you play clicks a month? Any format, but a breakdown of types you play could be interesting. Competitive, kitchen table, online, just interested. Um, I'm going to go with my 2019 answer because my current answer is like still pretty depressing right now. Um, I play quite a low amount right now. Uh, if you want the current amount, then the breakdown would be it would be somewhere around eight times a month, and it would be mostly kitchen table online, uh, and then whatever wasn't kitchen table or online would be competitive because those are pretty much the only events that are kicking off uh, lately. But prior to like prior to that, uh, back in 2019. Um, Per month, I would say on the average month, we'd be looking at probably like 16 times a month. Uh, that comes out to like around like four, uh, like three to four times a week. So my normal venues, uh, I was going to three venues a week. So there was a Wednesday night, a Thursday night, and then a Sunday. And occasionally I would miss one of those for whatever reason, but I almost never missed all three. Um, and then, so that was just, yeah, that was just casual venue play, uh, and whatever the format and stuff happened to be was never, it was almost never like 300 modern playing, just 300 modern. And then, uh, competitively would be probably once 
every like two months or maybe closer to three. Uh, not really sure. It's been so long. I can't remember, but yeah, seems like once every like three months, there would be something with, uh, like either in Des Moines or Kansas city or South Dakota or Nebraska's States or like, you know, something was going on or popping off. Okay. Nice. Um, I guess I'll sort of, since we have started running events again, I'm very fortunate and lucky for that. Um, I'll do kind of what the breakdown is going to look like for the next month or two months here. Um, but it, we know I only play once a week. Uh, so that'll be three games every week. And I'll just say that I don't make the last week because sometimes I just also don't show up. As many people are aware, uh, I'm pretty rough on showing up to hero clicks sometimes. So I'll say I play like a normal three games a week there we normally do a you know 400 silver maybe we only ever do 300 modern leading up to like a states or uh traveling for a tournament type of deal so we we will sometimes do like three or so weeks of 300 modern in a row to prepare for that but normally we'll do some pretty fun uh casual uh events at rainbow and then i'll say maybe once a month or twice a month play online i don't do it a lot since you don't need to anymore so i've pretty much ever since me and simian have stopped filming thursday throwdown i've just literally never played online since then and i'm very fortunate for that i very much enjoy that um but i wouldn't mind playing rule 20 i want to start doing rule 20 or sorry not rule 20 uh tabletop simulator i want to start doing battle royales on tabletop simulator every week with the Patreons, because I think it'd be really fun, and it could be some fun video content as well for people to enjoy. Um, so hopefully we can start doing that every week. And then, uh, just because these next few months look like we're all going to be doing some kind of big competitive event or traveling for an event, uh, I normally travel maybe once a month or every two or three months to go to games. Uh, Lucas, Kevin, Isaac, and I travel quite a bit. We'll go down to Kansas City, We'll go down to uh, Tulsa, whatever. You know, obviously, we just went to the Clicks Cup. There's also looks like there's going to be some events in Omaha we're going to travel to in the next couple of months here. Same thing for events in Wakefield. So I would say, you know, give or take every other month, every three months, whatever, we're traveling for an event. So I, yeah, that's basically what my hair looks like, like three times a week casually, or sorry, three times a month casually. Um, one or two online games a month and then one travel pretty much is what it, it's going to seemingly look like here for a while yeah uh, but yeah that's uh, that's uh, how we play I mean it's for me it's a good combination um, we finally in Omaha we do have a venue that's opened back up I just haven't been able to get the right time to like go and I also I've kind of forgotten how to build. It's like, it's weird getting back into like the flow of like building casually because for almost an entire year, uh, the only gameplay was online and was competitive. Oh, so now it's like, yeah. oh, I have to make sure I own figures again, which is just very strange. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely worth getting back into. Uh, definitely going to try and once all of our venues are back open and going definitely gonna like try and start getting back into the routine of going to at least a couple venues a week all right uh nice and then to cap the episode off here a little bit we're gonna do a quick jedi legend hero clicks tip of the week you don't want to sell me death sticks i don't want to sell you death sticks you want to go home and rethink your life i want to go home and rethink my life Jedi Legend says there are several sources, so don't forget there's stuff that does knock back. Doubles, including double sixes, so on the dice. Super Strength does knock back. Force Blast does knock back. It does a all caps passive knockback. If you have Force Blast anywhere, like if you have it on that dial, you do not have to use Force Blast to knock somebody back. It gives you passive knockback. And then there's a power action to knock somebody back. So all of your attacks, if you hit, have knockback with Force Blast. Quake knocks people back, and then Slingshot also knocks people back. Stuff that is no longer affected by knockback is like charge and combat reflexes no longer prevent it, and you no longer take any damage, whether it be fall damage, whether it be slamming into a wall, there's no damage from knockback whatsoever. And then knockback, you will always go three squares. No more, no less. That's it.
You go in three squares. Yeah. Also, if you if you multi attack and you hit more than one character and you choose knockback, all characters are knocked back. All characters are knocked you don't back. Get to pick Absolutely. One goes and one does. And uh, it's for that. It's you start with the ones closest to you, and then the ones farther away get knocked back. That's how yeah. it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make knockback uh, like really fun. If we, you know, yeah. We'll just let's always use knockback. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Great, Simeon. Good job. Let's, let's hey guys. Knock you... back. <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. You. you yeah, I, I feel gotta, like I you've transition. knocked back. Oh, quite a yeah, few yeah. things this episode. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Speaking of knocking uh, some stuff back. Uh, yeah. This episode was brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest Heroclix sealed and single products. Uh, of course, latest being uh, the ones that actually show up in ports and get unloaded on docks. Uh, turns out, CoolStuffInc.com can't change what is uh, brought into the United States just as much as whiz kids can so it's kind of crazy uh but you can't blame really anyone for a global shipping crisis you kind of just have to wait and mm. uh, be an adult uh i know it's hard it sucks sometimes but uh we'll get through it together for sure um mostly by passive aggressively attacking whiz kids on twitter though i'll allow it <laughs> all right uh, and just so you guys know, Dial H for Hero Clicks, if you guys want to send us any questions like the Patreon members did, you can do so by either sending them to our Facebook at Dial H for Hero Clicks or our Twitter. It's all Dial H for Hero Clicks on everything. You should be able to find us on Twitter. It's a four instead of F O R E, but whatever. No big deal. You guys are smart. You'll figure it out. Uh, of course, we have a Gmail. We don't get a ton of emails, but whenever we do, they're always really awesome and super refreshing. So I always like super appreciate the emails. I know uh, Simeon got a very Simeon-related email here uh, last week, which was really cool. Uh, yeah, so, like, that was to, awesome. I need to get on and yeah. do that. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, and, and, like, stuff like that was really cool. And then, uh, yeah, so you can do that. If you want to, though, to join our Discord, you have to be a Patreon member. If you join for as little as $1, you are entered. You know, you got one entry into the raffle each month where we're giving Heroclix figures away, as well as you just get to join our Discord where you can do cool things. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you donate $10 or $1, you are eligible for playing Bad Samaritan every time before we record, trying to do that every Sunday. And then hopefully we can try to do Battle Royales. If you have Tabletop Simulator every Saturday, you can also jump on in on those and you'll be a part of the Dial H for Heroclix YouTube channel if you do that. Uh, as well as stuff like that, we are going to do tokens every single month for people that do tokens uh, on our Patreon, as well as really cool sticker designs that you can see uh, at our Patreon. Everybody can see those, so if that is the make or break for joining our Patreon, not only do you get to support us and all the cool, like, fun videos that we do that we love making, but you also get stuff for it. I want to make sure the Patreon feels like you are getting your money's worth, so do cool stuff like that so thank you guys once again so much if you decided to support us on patreon we super duper appreciate it if you want to see uh awesome videos like uh whenever i decide to just you know casually make a viral video like i've been known to do uh you can check out uh, our youtube channel uh we had our latest video do pretty well the do even clicks video pretty happy with that one uh and of course you can get into the rowdy verse by checking out our extreme rules videos or uh, another fun video of Simeon and I filmed was our Hero Clicks Hot Ones video where we have hot wings and eat Hero Clicks, which is just tons of fun. So, once again, we try to make the most unique Hero Clicks content out there. So, definitely check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, just to be updated for when those videos come out. And it helps us. It helps us, you know, grow a little bit, which is really cool. So, thank you guys so much for your support. Like always, and happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey Google, back some more. Let's attack Jimmy. Because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.